For nine seasons, no one has occupied the seat of a monster truck any better than this man, Andy Brass. This will be his final race, but what Andy leaves behind is more than imposing numbers in the win column. They say in sports that true greatness is making those around you better. Andy has done so by helping enrich the lives of those less fortunate. That's how we'll remember him, and that's what it means to be a true blue champion. is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the best in MTRA Monster Truck Racing. Today, from the Allen County Fairgrounds in Lima, Ohio, it's the Monster Truck Thunder Drags. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. You know, for the first time ever on this show, we will follow a points championship. It's the Penda Point Series. In fact, a 13-race schedule starting today here in Lima and ending later this year in Indianapolis. The Penda Point Series awards points for excellence and consistency. A driver receives points as he advances round by round, bonus points for the fastest qualifier, and the fastest overall run of the racing event. And, of course, this is the start of a brand-new season. And with each new season, we have new trucks being debuted and driver changes. And here with more on that is my colleague, Army Armstrong. That's right, Gary. NASCAR is not the only major sport that has silly season. Check this out. You might need a pencil and paper to follow me. Kirk Dabney used to run GMC. He's teamed up with Marty Garza in a Ford operation. Had quick qualifying time today. Looked good through the first round. Donnie Van Loo, he got out of the driver's seat. Gene Patterson, who used to be with Ford, came over to work for Van Loo. Their combination, Chrysler-powered Chevrolet truck by an old Ford driver. You figure that one out. Dan Runney, new kid on the block of Bob and Marilyn Chandler's operation. He'll be driving the Bigfoot Power Wheels vehicle. That's the new Bigfoot black truck with flames. He is going to be a player today. Keep an eye on this kid. He's a new kid on the block in the stables. Meanwhile, the old pro in that stables, Andy Brass, he sat in pat. He's staying with the same combination he had last year. Remember the name Ray Prokowski, the new kid on the block for the Dodge team. He's gone over to Fred Schaefer's operation to be the new driver in the place of Ken Deppie. Where's Ken Deppie? Rumor has it he's walking around the Bigfoot operation. That's the Dodge and Ford side of it. Now, Paul Schaefer will be representing the Chevrolet camp along with the new guy on the block for us, Dan Patrick. Patrick's been in this sport for years, but this is the first time he's actually come out to run head-to-head. -head. He'll be running head-to-head -head representing Chevrolet with Schaefer and guys like Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. I hope you follow that because I don't want to have to go through it again, but basically what it washes out to, this is going to be a good year to watch the monster trucks on TNN. Army, I didn't have my pen in my program. Could you repeat that again for me? Well, Arma, you mentioned the fast qualifying run turned in by Kirk Dabney. Here is this on video replay. There is overkill, and that is the quick qualifying run at 5.47 for Kirk Dabney. Now we're going to take you back and show some highlights from round one competition. Pam Botters in the boogie van in the near lane against your fast qualifier, Kirk Dabney, in the far lane. And Kirk Dabney would take that victory at 5.90. Also in round one, Dan Patrick took on Colt Cobra. Dan Patrick, the American Gladiator, in the near lane. There is the snake bite truck in the far lane. And this victory in round one would go to Colt Cobra with a clocking of 5.56. But look at that nose stand on the landing. And there's a the time for Colt Cobra as he advances. Also from round one, for Kowski, we talked about Ray earlier, and Paul Schaefer. Now, Paul Schaefer comes over representing the Chevrolet camp, and these guys have literally put war paint on as Dodge and Ford have dominated this sport the last two years, and Chevrolet is loading both barrels and coming after them. Point in hand, Gary. Out of North Carolina, Waynesville, North Carolina, Gary Porter comes back on the circuit again. When the points went up by Penda, all the Chevrolet boys said, let's go get them. This is going to make for an interesting year. However, Andy Brass and Bigfoot doing what he does well. It was a 523. He'll be a player. Another Chevrolet, the Hall brothers, team up against one of the strongest Dodges in the country. So, like I say, we've got good representation this year by all the manufacturers. Well, Fred Schaefer took that one, and his time was 5.55. Now, an interesting matchup between Gene Patterson, who moved the Bigfoot operation over to Don Van Loo's team to run against the guy who replaced him driving for Bob Chandler, Dan Runte. And it is... Runte drills him with a 5-5 shot. Now, notice the new colors on the Bigfoot truck. They call Bigfoot Power Wheel, Gary. As we are ready for round two. 
Well, Andy Brass is going to come out. He's your defending world champion, kind of like an old pair of loafers. He's driving the same truck he's in last year. Paul Schaefer in the other lane out of Portage, Indiana, be representing the Chevrolet camp. We're glad to have this guy on the tour. And like I said earlier, the Chevrolet guys kind of got behind the bar, gave themselves a pep talk, and they want to bump these Fords and Dodge out of this Ford's lead seat. But in order to do it, you got to get past this guy, and that's one tough little job. Yeah, it's not only Ford, it's the Bob Chandler juggernaut. Yeah, he, Chandler is to this board what Penske or Junior Johnson or somebody is to NASCAR and Indy Series. I mean, somebody seems to be on top and seems to be Chandler. Look at this. We got a race. And it is. Oh, look at that. Call that a mild upset. Boy, everybody in the grandstand has got a Chevrolet shirt on. He's drinking ear to ear a 530 for Schaefer. Boy, this is Schaefer's comeback tour. Andy Brass at 532, ever so close, but Paul Schaefer takes the victory. This is going to be an old-time slapping contest because you got bragging rights on the line. Number one dodge in the far lane, new kid in the fourth near lane, new sponsor. Everybody's trying to impress everybody. You call it, Gary. It's all dodge, all dodges. Fred Schaefer has some trouble in the landing. There's a 516 for Schaefer. Not a very good day for the Ford camp and Bob Chandler. All right, now back to action. In this round, Dabney, the near lane Colt Cobra, who is back in the cockpit of Snakebite. He did some R&D uh, work last season. Now he's back in the cockpit, and it is. Yeah, Colt Cobra. He pulls the trigger. Almost rolls it over. He's trying to shut it down, Gary, on the big end. Oh. oh. There was a case where he got up on two wheels. He kept his foot in it, though, and pulled it back out. He used every bit of runoff area. That was, I'll tell you what, that was great driving, but also these trucks have a kill switch. I want you to realize that whoever was operating that kill switch did the right thing. If they would have turned his power off right now, he would have gone on over it. They let him drive the truck out before they hit the kill switch. Man, that was close, Gary Lee. Look at how close it gets to that water tanker down there. Right behind the water tanker was our camera position. At the very end of the track, they had a bunch of poles. Well, the driver, trying to get the truck shut out, actually got into the poles. You know, it's a lot of axles. First of all, you, you okay, Cole? Heck of a ride. Heck of a ride. Yeah, it was a heck of a ride. Uh, we've been having uh, some suspension not problems, but uh, we've been working on them. We knew we had to right race. We had to come out. We had to give it everything we had. And uh, going against somebody like Overkill, you saw the passes he put down earlier today. We knew we couldn't back out of it. Uh, I'm fine. All the safety equipment worked flawlessly. As far as we can tell, the truck's not hurt. We're going to be back next round. Let me ask you a question. We've been watching you on the top end of the truck. You are getting your neck wrung every time this truck lands. I mean, your head is really ripping around in there. Does that bother your neck at all? Snakes don't have necks. <laughs> Got you, Army! After that wild ride the last round, you can see that Snake Bite is back together. No damage to that truck. And there's a look from inside the cockpit at Andy Brass. You know, in the interview, Snake Bite said snakes don't have necks or anything. Well, I'll go along with that. On the other side of the slate is a guy that's got a good head on top of his necks, Andy Brass. Now, he went out in the previous round, but he comes back to the quick side of the bracket. And I guarantee you, he's like an old-time gunfighter. Andy Brass still thinks he can win this thing. Andy Brass is going to win it yeah. big time. Now, there may have been some damage, however, that run turned in by snake bite may not be indicative of the kind of run that he normally could do. Yeah. It could be a result of that last run. He nets a 6-11, qualified in a 5, Brass a 5-16. So you're talking some time difference there, but the story here is Andy Brass is back into this thing through the loser bracket, and they're going to have to rock and roll to make it to the finals. Ford's in the final. Is this Dodge or is this Chevrolet going to be going against the Ford? Boy, the drama's up. Goes green, dodge in the far lane, Gary, it looks like to me. Fred Schaefer got the whole shot, and he rides that whole shot to victory. So it's going to be Dodge and Ford in the final here in Lima, Ohio. Fred Schaefer in barefoot guns down Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol. There's a time of 5.66 for Paul Schaefer. Well, there's a look at barefoot and Fred Schaefer. Remember that great hole shot? He had the semifinal round. Well, Schaefer runs a Linko transmission in the red truck, dodge the far lane. And it's kind of like winding up a rubber band or a little airplane. The harder you go, the harder it'll hold. So he is ready to go. Now, the Cosby horsepower that Brass was talking about is in the engine compartment. So both drivers seem to have an edge. Fred with the transmission, the Bigfoot truck, and Andy Brass with horsepower. But the bottom all line shot, is the whole shot, whole shot, Andy Brass. Victory. Yes, he does at 513. It looked like he got the whole shot, and then right there, there was Fred Schaefer. Uh, Schaefer stayed on him like a bird dog, but 
Brass making the horsepower mile an hour on the other end and comes back to the loser side of this bracket. Look at the start. A good start by both guys. Watch them settle down in no man's land. You notice the wheels up on the Ford. Now the Dodge makes horsepower and powers the wheels up. They pull the trigger on the last jump. Oh, by less than a fender, it's Andy Brass. Brass takes the victory here in Lyme, Ohio. There's a shot inside the cockpit as we ride with him again. The track may be straight, but look at him work on that steering wheel. Andy Brass, a real workout in the Bigfoot Cruiser. He takes the victory. He's with Army. Andy Brass proving he's a champion in the fight. You just don't give up. You got back into this thing to the loser bracket. Now you're the national points leader. Yeah, you know, the Ford uh, Bigfoot here has been running well for us today. It just like I say, we slacked off a little bit the one round, and it's something we proved that you can't do out here in the race series now because everybody's so competitive. So we just stepped back in it. We knew what we had to do, and we were just going to have to push it hard. We knew Fred was going to run hard. So like I say, that's all we could do. The John Cosby Hemi did us a good job. Like I say, Firestone's hooked up for us, and I think we did it real well today. Well, congratulations to Andy Brass. We'll have a chance to take a look now at the Penda Point standings after one of 13 events. There's Andy Brass leading Fred Schaefer. Then it's Paul Schaefer, Colt Cobra, Kirk Dabney rounding out the top five, and they both drive Ford-powered trucks. Well, I'm standing where every driver aspires to be in all of motorsports. This is Victory Lane. Now, so far, we've completed round one, getting ready for round two. But first, let's get Army Armstrong's impressions of round one competition. Gary, after the first round, there's a couple of major stories. Over my right shoulder, Barefoot's being towed out of the ballpark. Why? Because the young lady in the boogie van beat him in the first round of competition. We were told to watch out for this young lady, Pam Botter. She's definitely going to be a player. Other stories of interest. Second race of the year, the quick qualifier, the overkill team with the Ford. They're looking strong this year. Third part of the interesting stories. In the first round, only one Chevrolet made it through. Everything else was the blue oval bunch. The Ford teams are looking extremely strong. But there is a constant, that is Andy Brass and the Bigfoot team. Their philosophy is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and they're all going to the next round. Back to you, Gary. Here is a look now at that upset in round one. Pam Potter's the near lane, that good-looking boogie band. Fred Shaver, the Dodge pickup in the far lane, and it was all Pam Potter's as she takes the upset victory over Fred Shaver. And this will really hurt Fred the points, Chase. He was second going in earlier. Army talked to Pam. Pam, a lot of people wondered if, if you're going to be a serious contender for this thing. I hope they realize now you are definitely here to play the game. Yeah, th yeah, that's what we built the second truck for to come out here and race this series. I I'm not here to, you know, play around. I am here to take, take a win. And the young lady is certainly building her fan base. Another pleasant surprise this weekend, the qualifying run of Kurt Dabney, the overkill truck. He's the fastest qualifier. He was the quickest qualifier for the second event in a row that gives him bonus points. But you know, he missed the driver's meeting, and that cost him 100 points. That could come back to haunt him. That could be his boogeyman before the year's over. More highlights now from round one. Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, in the far lane. And Kurt Dabney, overkill, your fast qualifier, the near lane it is. Yeah, it was uh, Kirk Dabney taking the victory in round one, so he advances the 528, and that's exactly what he qualified as. In the near lane, Colt Cobra in the state by truck. The far lane is Ray Borkowski. And Cobra literally drilled him on the start line during that first round. Borkowski's still getting used to the new truck combination. Before the year's over, he'll be a player, but right now, that's the guy that's holding the hot hand in this sport. Speaking of hot hands, look at the pairing in the next round. The Hall brothers come out to go against none other than Andy Brass. Bigfoot Cruiser. Once again, this is action from round one. It was all Andy Brass. There was a problem with Mark Hall. He did not finish. There's the 521. Andy's not qualifying that well, but he's very, very fast in competition. Here is Paul Schaefer and Dan Patrick. Schaefer the near lane. Patrick the far lane. It was all Schaefer. Schaefer comes with the sport through the sport of dirt track racing, trying to make a name for himself in monster trucks, and he is doing it rapidly. Dan Runte had a single in round one. There was a problem with the kill switch on Gene Patterson's truck. So the Bigfoot Power Wheels vehicle had the buy run, a single. Earlier, Army had a chance to take a look at this vehicle. Gary, while walking through the pit area, we found something I want to point out to the people. A lot of folks don't realize that monster truck chassis are adjustable, and they do adjust them in order to make the truck react differently. Proof in the hand. Look at here. When they went out to qualify first, the four-link bar was in this hole right here. They didn't like the way the truck reacted, so they dropped the bar down, 
three more inches. Now what that does is change the complete geometry of the suspension. This is a four link suspension. So when you drop it this much, it changes the whole geometry of the suspension, allowing the driver to actually adjust the truck. So this proves just like any other form of motorsport, circle track, they put wedge in or they take wedge out or they put stagger in they take stagger out. This proves that a monster truck chassis is adjustable and they do use the adjustments. Back to you, Gary. Yeah, this is high-tech motorsport at its best as round two competition now gets underway. Dabney, the near lane, Runte, the far lane. excitement in this sport when those motors start to roar. 520, Kirk Dabney takes it. Three one hundredths of a second, he takes the victory. I'll tell you what, the new kids on the block are making a name for themselves today. We got the designer right here, Marty, and the driver. Uh, fellas, congratulations. It looked like you hit on the right combination this year. Well, Army, a lot of effort's been in, put into this truck, and I'm kind of speechless. It's our first race of the year. We had a lot of expectations, but you know how tough it is out here. When you go against any of these guys, you got to battle. Fast qualifier overkill, Kirk Dabney. He has been so impressive early this season. Now, Kirk is fifth in the point standings, but he has been very fast in qualifying, and he moves alongside the Monster Patrol. There is Paul Schaefer. And Paul is third right now in the point standings. Early before this one, he talked with Army Armstrong. Gary, we're standing by with the great hope for Chevrolet right now. Paul, you know, you guys are right there with each other. But you're the only Chevrolet still remaining in this thing. Can you can you handle these Fords? Well, I got my Van Sennis motor running real good, and this Chevrolet, it's making a lot of horsepower, and uh, we're just a little bit off, but I think we can run with the Fords. Let me ask you a question. On the starting line, how important is the starting line today? The starting line is very important. You have to cut a good light, and being a, this is my second year driving a monster truck, and I'm a little slow on the light. Another guy who has upgraded his horsepower is Kirk Daphne in Overkill. He teamed up with Marty Garza in a computer design vehicle that Garza came up with. And unique here is the fact that the Chevrolet you're looking at, the engine is in the front, stock location, just where they came out in Detroit. The engine in the Ford sets to the rear, but look at the Chevrolet. He bumps him big time on the start. The Ford comes back. Who had it? Ever so close, ever so close. I think it's Paul Schaefer, Army. Look at the time here momentarily. Almost a photo finish. We'll go back and take a look at this again. It's almost too close to call. Watch now at the finish line. Paul Schaefer, the far lane, Dabney, the near lane, right there. Oh, it is 519 for Kirk Dabney. And for Paul Schaefer, we got 517. So Paul Schaefer takes the victory. Here's Army. Monster Patrol picks up the win by just about the lug of a tire. Man. Boy, the lug of it. Congratulations to you, Paul. I tell you what, these guys with overkill are going to be tough this year. But let's look at what you're doing. One Chevrolet made it into the second round. You're going into the final rep in the Chevrolet camp. That's got to make you awfully happy. Yeah, and that makes me real happy because my Vance and his motor putting out some horsepower and the Spitfire plugs is doing his job and uh, Red Baron truck wash and and we're, we're, we're right there. I'm glad for the Chevrolets. We'll let you get ready for the final. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, we can tell you it will be Chevrolet against Ford in the finals because right here we've got a pair of Fords. The Fords have realized you've got to move the engine mid chassis or in the middle of the vehicle to make the truck really balance out. That seems to be the combination working for them. Both of these trucks have that type of a chassis set up, Gary. Both of them run 460 cubic inch engines, supercharged by the Boer Drive Service out of California, so the horsepower is about the same. Basically, it's going to be a driver's race. And they battle right now for the right to meet Paul Schaefer for the championship here in Lima, Ohio. There is the far lane. That is Snakebite and Colt Cobra back in the cockpit after a year off for some research and development work, and he goes up against the biggest name in monster truck racing, Andy Brass. Brass and the Mad Blue takes the win. Andy Brass by a over a fender at 5.04. Brass keeps getting faster throughout the afternoon. There's the 5.20 for Colt Cobra. Andy Brass will put the Ford representing the blue oval bunch, that's the logo on the front of the truck, in the right lane. The big story today could be who's going to represent the bow tie brigade, if you will. The Chevrolet logo, the bow tie. In the past, we've had 
people such as Jerry Ford, we've had USA number one, but not for a couple of years has the Chevrolet camp had anybody that could step up and flex the muscle that it's taken to win the Monster Truck Championship. This kid could be the bearer of that. As we look on, the crew looks on. We are ready for the finals. Let's watch and listen. Here they are. Well, you can feel the drama, Gary. Ford Chevy. And it's Andy Brass. Andy Brass by a fender. It was so close, though, from the angle the crew was watching from our television angle. We can see there's the 526 for Paul Schaefer, but we can see that Andy Brass did indeed take the victory, his second victory of the young monster truck racing series. Well, nothing for the Chevrolet camp to change up. They've got a new guy. His name's Schaefer, and he will be a player before the year's over. Look how close this was. Andy Brass pads his points lead in the uh, Pen to Point series after two events. As we take a look at the points, there's Andy Brass, some 650 points up on Paul Schaefer. Now, the other Schaefer, Fred Schaefer, is a disappointing Ford. In fact, he got knocked out of round one in Lima, and now the barefoot Dodge finds itself in a deeper hole because Fred gets knocked out of round one competition here this afternoon. And now with more in today's competition is my television colleague, Army Armstrong. Gary, the big story in the monster truck wars at the beginning of the year was going to be Ford versus Dodge, and everybody knew that Fred Schaefer was going after the Bob Chandler operation. That would be Dodge, Schaefer, Chandler, and the Ford camp. Well, really, it had materialized that way. To be very, very honest, in layman's terms, it looks like the Bigfoot team has found something, and they're going forward, and Fred Schaefer and his crew, very honestly, it looks like they've lost something this year with the Mopar combination. Fred Schaefer right now is going to be playing catch-up if he's going to try to win the world championships, and really, at the beginning of the year, everybody thought that that would be the guy to beat. Back to you, Gary Lee. Army now some round one highlights with Paul Schaefer and Fred Schaefer. Fred Schaefer in the far lane was the eighth fastest qualifier. Paul Schaefer in the near lane was the second fastest qualifier. It was close, but by three one hundredths of a second, Paul Schaefer took the victory. And after his win, we went trackside and Army caught up with the victorious Paul Schaefer of Monster Patrol. It was close when he, he took off first at the starting line and I caught him at the end. And I know if I can get down on the ground in between the cars, I thought I'd catch him at the end. And it was a rough weekend for Pam Vodders. This is her in qualifying. A few weeks back, she rolled the boogie band, but in Bloomsburg, she would get knocked out by the quick qualifier Andy Brass in round one. Watch this little bootleg spin in the boogie van. Oh, she came real close to getting upside down right there. She was the seventh fastest qualifier. After a poor showing in Lima, it appears as if Dan Patrick in the American Gladiator has really stepped it up a notch, taking on snake fight in round one. Patrick would notch the second win for Chevrolet in the first round. We've had problems with qualifying. We only ran a 6.20 was the best we ran yesterday. But at 2 o'clock this morning, I uh, had this thought, and I went out and redid my fuel system last night, and I had a check valve in backwards. So the motor wasn't burning the fuel. It was getting to it. So we did that, and it was like a brand-new truck today. Guy Wood, who we've seen compete in the Hulk monster truck, took over the driving duties for Fred Schaefer's Dodge Express. It was all Kurt Dabney here. Both Dodges shut out in round one. More highlights now from round one. Back once again, the ever popular crush cam view. Well, Gary, this is Pennsylvania. Really, this is the groundhog view is what we call it here. <laughs> well, that's a look at Gary Porter's win over Don Van Lu. That makes three wins for Chevrolet in round one. Now, the best time of round one and qualifying will be turned in by Dan Runty in the near lane with the Power Wheels Bigfoot. Always tough to beat. We talked about the Chandler Ford camp going forward. They've gone to a different approach in the suspension department. And as we know, they are the trendsetters in this sport. And earlier, Army Talk with Bigfoot crew chief Jim Kramer. Jim Kramer with Bigfoot standing with me to try to explain why there's some changes in the suspension. This time last year, everybody thought the cantilever suspension was the way to go. Is that not the case now, Jim? Well, the verdict is not fully in yet. The cantilever suspension has worked well for us, but we went to the cantilever because we felt we needed more axle drop. We need more droop over these set of cars to get the tires down further. And that 
that entailed having a longer shock absorber. Well, it wasn't a longer shock absorber available, so we gave it the distance to drop through the cantilever arm ratio. Well, now Trail Masters, since our associate with them, uh, we kind of co-developed the shock that's 28 inches long. That enables us to have this kind of an axle drop over the first set of cards, which we feel is necessary, and not utilize a cantilever. The cantilever is great. I still think it's a good system. But if we can cut the weight of the apparatus off of the truck, the truck's going to go faster. We can take that weight and put it in a more advantageous spot on the truck. What's the advertising slogan? The best never rest, two of the best in the business right here. Well, as a matter of fact, the one on the left, the heartbeat of America for these advertising slogans, used to be the crew chief for the one on the right. Bragging rights coming out for Chevy. Chevy takes the win. Oh, a big win for Dan Patrick. A big win for Chevrolet as he knocks out the fast qualifier, Andy Brass, in Bigfoot. Gary, the guy that seems to be the happiest of all. We see him in all types of sports. You're a crew chief this weekend. You're doing an awfully good job. Thanks, thanks a lot, Army. You know, Dan called me up last week. He's really having some bad luck. He said, won't you come on up there and give us a whirl? We've been trashing all week trying to get this Samson in the field, you know. And we're making all kinds of power. We're just having a hard time getting it hooked. We set up last night and thought about it. And we got it going today. Well, all ago you said it was 2 o'clock in the morning. We're just congratulating. You know, it's kind of weird. This guy, like a bad penny, keeps showing up, but he brings good luck with him. Hey, could this be your day? Uh, I hope so. Uh, Gene, you know, I've been friends for years, and Gene's an excellent driver, a great crew chief. You know, I think having him with me now has just kind of turned everything around. You know, we've got great sponsors behind us now with the Gladiators and the high-tech trailer people. Um, you know, I've, I've been waiting several years to get into this series. Well, good. We're glad to have you here. I'm going to grab Andy Brass real quick. Andy? Boy, I tell you what, you guys look like two old war horses going at it out there. He was running you hard. Yeah, he is. You know, like I say, Dan, Dan's been in the sport for a long time. He's built some good equipment. Dan's been doing a lot of the chassis. We run one of his chassis, and, and we knew when he come out with a truck this year, he was going to be a tough competitor just because, like I say, he builds good equipment. He spent some time in trying to get the fuel system worked out. Looked like he got it worked out on there, and the truck's turned in some good times. So we knew we was going to have to run tough to beat him, and we just didn't have it at the very end. Another now Ford Chevrolet matchup at the starting line. Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, over in the near lane, taking on Kirk Dabney in the far lane. Kirk Dabney runs a motor to the rear setup. That's the vehicle in the far lane. Gary Porter staying with something tried and true. He keeps the motor in front of the vehicle. He'll be representing the Chevrolet camp Ford in the far lane. Chevrolet's already taken one big win. Let's see if they can make it two. Yeah. There they take it. Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, by what, a few inches? but he takes the victory at a 5.30 ET. And there's Kirk Dabney's 5.34. Remember, the fast loser will come back in the next round. And there is a look at Dan Patrick. He has been the pleasant surprise here this afternoon in the Chevrolet. Now, he's only knocked his buddy out once, Andy Brass, but Brass comes back as the fast loser. So can Dan do it? two rounds in a row. Right now, Dan's playing the role of the great white hope, if you will, because Chevrolet, for the first time, is looking like they're flexing some muscle. The last time they ran, two hundredths of a second determined the winner. That went to the truck in this side. He can make that up on the start line. Brass tries to drill the tree. Does he do it, Gary? You it's call so it. so close. No, I think the Chevrolet wins again. And you saw a quick glance there at Gene Patterson. He applauds his driver as Dan Patrick takes the victory. There's a look at Andy Brass of 520, but Brass is eliminated. He will go to the trailer. Boy, Dan Patrick, when you're hot, you're hot, but it's not coming easy. You guys are having to work every round, every round so hard. Well, I mean, this is the best series there is. You know, the Pendant Point Series, you gotta have your act together. And up till now, we haven't, but I think we've got it. You know, Gene is doing an excellent job as a crew chief. He's just telling me how to drive, you know, I'm proud of the vehicle I built, you know, plus all the others I built. And, you know, I just can't really say enough. Well, we're set for the finals. Dan Runty and the Power Wheels Bigfoot. Earlier, we got some thoughts from Army Armstrong on the finals. Gary, there's always a story within a story. The big story today is a guy named Gene Patterson. He's not even driving a truck. He's the crew chief on the Samson truck. However, this time last year, Gene Patterson was driving the Bigfoot truck that the truck he's crewing against is going against in the final. You talk about a guy that may have mixed emotions. Let's keep an eye on Patterson, see how this thing goes down. Plus, it's the first time we had a Chevrolet in a final in a long time. The old Chevrolet and Ford battle going to the final at Bloomsburg. This is what the sport is all about, Gary. The crew chiefs converse. An interesting point, though, is the right lane. You talked about a moment ago, all the winds have come out of the right lane. 
quicker time in the previous lap. He's a lane choice that puts the Chevrolet over there. We may have our first Chevrolet winner, Gary. We do, we do. Dan Patrick, look at the jubilation there by Gene Patterson as the Chevrolet, the bow tie brigade takes the win. It's been a long time since we've said that. I guarantee you, Dan Patrick is pumped because in an earlier interview, he himself said this Pin the Point series is the best monster truck series in the world. And to win it, he has got to be grinning from ear to ear. I bet he looks like a checkered cat back in the pit area. There's a look at the uh, Power Wheels Bigfoot headed back to the pit area. One more look coming right at you. The wind comes in the left lane. And there is the margin of victory. Oh, look at the air coming off that second jump for Dan Patrick as he takes the victory here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. And I know that crew is going to be ecstatic. Let's go down tracks right now. Army, see if you can catch up with our winners. Dan Patrick, if you guys don't do anything else, you talk to Kids of America. If you believe in your dream, they can come too. Congratulations to both of you. Thanks, Army. You know, I, I really owe a lot to Gene here. I mean, he helped me through the weekend and got me tuned in. You know, he can see what the truck's doing where I can't by trying to do everything myself, you know. But uh, I want to thank all the people of American Gladiators for their support, High Tech Trailer. And all, above all, I want to thank my family for their support. How about it? Good team. Looks like you guys could be holding a secret hand for the whole year. Yeah, we got two of them mounted right up here on the hood. This Chevrolet Samson, we made it. We're making a presence known here this weekend. You know, it's hot out here. Dan and me, we've been, you know, button heads together and trying to come up with a combination. And we think we finally come on it. Well, I'll tell you what, Gary, for a couple of years now, there's almost been a drought. We haven't had a chance to talk about the Chevrolet people, but this could be the new Chevrolet team to keep an eye on. Back to you. Finding the right combination, Dan Patrick and Gene Patterson, both of them used to work for the Bigfoot team. They come over now with the Samson Chevrolet and qualify into the next round with the quickest run ever, a 4-9 something. So the handwriting's on the wall. Bloomsburg is going to be the place to be for monster truck fans this year again. Back to you, Gary. Army with some highlights of round one. Here's a look at that first monster truck in the fours. Dan Patrick and the Chevy Samson, sponsored by American Gladiator. A watch on the run. Patrick had a very rough landing, knocking off the rear tire. And that sent Dan and Gene Patterson scrambling to get it fixed. Round one competition, Runty goes up against Paul Schaefer. As we told you earlier, Schaefer was knocked out. Here is the run to put him on the trailer. And there's the margin of victory for Dan Runty in the Power Wheels Bigfoot. Now remember, in this sport, a quick loser could possibly come back. So if you're finished to run hard, Schaefer goes with this, a 5-18. He was on the throttle. There's a look at Kirk Dabney out of Columbia City, Indiana. He drives a truck called Overkill. He defeated Mark Hall in the Hall Brothers entry. Coming right at you. I like this shot, Army. Over our crash cam. Groundhog cam. Groundhog Pennsylvania. Cam. That's right. Groundhog cam. <laughs> Pennsylvania. In qualifying, Andy Brass. Now, Andy Brass, normally the first or second fastest in qualifying. Today, he was the sixth fastest. Had some trouble in qualifying. The problem, as you can see, it was in, it was in the chassis. The horsepower was there. The truck just wasn't handling right. It wasn't going where he was pointing. It. Gary Porter was matched up against Pam Botter. There's a look at Gary from Wadesboro, North Carolina, in the Carolina Crusher. There is Pam Botters out of Hagerstown, Maryland, in the far lane. And it was Gary Porter, right at the very end, really made up some ground. Exactly. Pam, let me tell you something. This Vodders team, along with people like the Hall brothers, they're starting to close in on these guys. Porter won the battle, but he may have lost the war because he lost lane choice. This right lane is almost mystic about how much horsepower it'll hold. And you watch, everybody gets quick qualifying time. I'm predicting it's going to go the right side today. Right lane belongs to Runte, left lane, far lane. He's in trouble, Gary Porter. Oh, he hit that water barrier over there. Yeah, the Yodok barrier system comes in handy. There's a sign right down the road from here. So uh, test one, I guess this is the place to do it. Well, you can see the damage despite the uh, Hydra barrier. You can see the damage to the front of the Carolina Crusher. The front was crushed that time. Now watch again the right side of your screen. The problem is in the lane. Uh, Andy Brass had trouble over there. Gary is too. See, the trucks are not coming down straight. They're coming down goofy. Then they hit water barriers. That'd really be goofy. Yeah. Uh, Army standing by with Gary Porter following that altercation with the uh, barrier. Gary, what? Uh, do you have any idea what caused it to go like that? Well, Army, you know, I knew I had to launch the truck really hard off the light, you know, to take uh, Bigfoot out. And, uh, you know, that's what I was doing. I was trying to go for it all. It hooked up really hard on the line. When I landed over the first set of cars, it felt sort of like a rear axle shaft broke or something. That's what made the truck turn. And uh, 
you know, when I felt it turn as bad as it did, I knew there was no use trying to get it back. You know, I just slammed on the brakes. I seen the pole coming up, you know, and I tried to turn away from it. And uh, it surprised me how hard those water barriers are. Now, Dabney's teamed up with Marty Garza. Garza's out of the great state of Texas. He brings some knowledge from that side. Dabney comes from Indiana. He's a Hoosier. He brings some knowledge there. And together, they're going to be players before this year's over. They run the mid-motor setup. They run a new concept in suspension. They seem to be able to get horsepower down, but they're in the bad lane. Whoa! Oh, but he pulls off the victory. Made a fool out of me. Well, he was a faster <laughs> qualifier than Andy Brass, but Brass, because of the last round, had lane choice. Good win, but more important than that, it came out of the left lane. How did you get it to work on the left side for you? Well, Army, we go out there anticipating a hard run against Bigfoot. We really knew we were down on the lane. We just really put that out of our mind and give the truck 110%. That's what happened. Can anybody else win out of the left lane? Um, I really don't know. I would say the left lane pulled around. I was a little out of shape. I'd like to be over in that right lane. Well, Fred had to knock out his teammate to make it to round two, and Patrick now in round two, trying to back up that 498 from the first round, the fastest ever. First monsters in the four-second bracket. He can do it. He's in the good lane. Oh, no! Now, will that be a DQ? I believe so. The rules say both tires have to hit the object you're jumping. There it is. It's official. Sampson has been DQ'd. It was going to be a quick one. There's Fred Schaefer's barefoot at 5.25. That was a good run at 5.25. But right here is where Sampson gets disqualified and misses with the left rear. And Gary, what we're looking at here is the starting line in the uh, left lane of Bloomsburg. Look how deep they've dug down in the track. This is about an eight or nine inch depth on the right side of the passenger side of the truck. Now, come over here with me. On the driver's side of the truck, right here, it's only about three or four inches that's been dug up. So what that does is basically set the chassis. We may have found out why these guys are having trouble with this lane on the track. They're actually setting a little bit cock out on the starting line, so when they hit the first jump, it throws the truck out of Kelter, and they never have a chance to recover it. Back to you, Gary. In this sport, they want weight transfer front to back, but not side to side. We prepare now for a big foot shootout. A couple of vehicles are identical. Firestone, Firestone. Ford, Ford. Supercharged by BDS, BDS. <laughs> Keep going. What you're saying is these trucks are almost identical. Yeah, if you're in the decal business, you got all kind of decals out there right now. All the sponsors represented on the side of these guys. You know, they do bring a lot of exposure to their national sponsors, and that's what it's all about. Looky here. Boy, Your lane. Oh, Rutte really drilled Brass. He got the whole shot, and it was all Dan Runte. Dan Runte caught a Brass asleep at the wheel. Boy, that's something you just don't see. Dabney's in what we've been calling the good lane. Schaefer goes to the bad lane. He referred to qualifying. The qualifying quickness will put you on the good side of this ledger. That's where Dabney is right now. We talked earlier about Fred Schaefer losing some chemistry. Well, maybe he's getting the chemistry back this weekend. He's overdue for a good run. Oh, man, everybody in the whole world thought he was going to dominate this series just like that run. Well, he did dominate that one. The far lane takes the victory. Fred Schaefer, five seconds. A good ET for Fred Schaefer. The best run he's had all season. In the near lane, nearest to you right now, Fred Schaefer. We're talking to Dodge Ford, but you also got Firestone and Goodyear. You got Bragging Rights. Sponsor names on the sides of the vehicle. They're both going to the lanes. All right, Fred Schaefer near. Dan running the far lane. This is for, as they say, all the marbles here in Bloomsburg. They leave together. First jump together. No man's Looks lane, like Gary. The Ford. Yeah. The Ford. Dan Rutte in the far lane. Dan Rutte takes the victory. Fred Schaefer at a 5067. But look at Ronte, 4.96. The quickest ever, 4.967. Dan Patrick was the first to go into the Ford today with a Chevrolet, but you guys with the Fords came back and went, that's the quickest ever. We've been shooting for Fords all weekend, Army. I don't know what to say, but got to thank the great crew. We got Bob and Ford Motor Company for letting me be out here. I love it. I'll tell you what, you're, you're doing a fine job. You're an awfully good driver when you came into the thing. Jim, come over here real quick. You got to be proud of this kid. You guys are the quickest in the world now. He's coming on. I tell you what, we talked about it. We, he knew what he had to do. And the truck, we kept getting a little more. We're squeezing the truck tight. I got to admit that. But this Ford's coming on. The Firestone's bit. 
Fastest time, fastest monster truck ever. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey, if I was going to buy a pickup truck tomorrow, what kind should it be? Better go buy a Ford. 496, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> All right, bud. You could hear the emotion in Dan Runty's voice as Runty uh, closes just a bit. In fact, after Bloomsburg, the Bigfoot trucks are one and two in the point standings. Now, right now, we're in the mobile work unit for the Samson Chevrolet truck. And Samson, with driver Dan Patrick, was a pleasant surprise at Bloomsburg. A victor, the first time for Chevrolet in a long time. And also, Dan had the first run ever in the four-second bracket. So Chevy, once again, can be a player. Unfortunately, tonight, Dan has been knocked out of competition in round one. Round one is now over. Let's check in on the competition. Trackside is Army Armstrong. What you're looking at is the right lane in Springfield, Missouri. Now, why we're looking at the right lane is very simple. If there's a story to be told, it's got to come out of the right lane. Why? Every winner in the first round came out of the right lane. That'll not be able to be the case in the next round because some of the guys that won in this lane in the first round are going to have to go to the other lane in the next round, and those are the guys that are sweating BBs in the pit area. Why did the right lane work so well, you might want to know. Real simple. This lane, for some reason, was built over an existing road, a gravel road. Looky here. Even though the track is torn up a little bit, you still have gravel pieces in here, and that allows these monster trucks to dig in and not to go so far down into the ground. So the big story of the day is everybody walking through the pit area with their big grin on their face. They're going in the right lane this round, and the guys are singing the left lane blues. You know where they're going. Back to you, Gary. Well, Army taking a look at some highlights now. Andy Brash showed us in qualifying that the right lane was indeed the place to be. Now, last year, it was just the exact opposite, with virtually every win coming from the left lane. But as you indicated tonight, the right lane is the place to run. There's a look at the overkill truck. The overkill is Kirk Dabney. He came to this race fourth place in the Penda Point Series. Now, Andy Brash would have to back up that qualifying run best time of round one and he did so in this win over Kirk Dabney there's a time at 510 and as we mentioned at the top of the show Dan Patrick who looked so promising in Bloomsburg broke something in qualifying and uh, makes a quick and unceremonious round one exit of course Fred Schaefer goes on to uh, round two competition with his clocking of 5.35 and here's a different look from the crush cam. Watch this, Army, and that's why we call it the crush cam. You ever wonder what it looked like to get hit in the face? <laughs> you saw it. Gary Wiggins, Carolina Crusher, is here in Springfield this weekend. Gary Porter is repairing the truck, which we saw in the opening at the wreck a week ago in Bloomsburg. But once again, he goes into the infamous left lane, and it cost him a win. There's a look at Pam Botters against Paul Schaefer. Botters in that far lane. Now, Botters in the round one competition had some trouble in the shutdown area. Right here, makes a hard left-hand turn and heads for the fence. Oh, she had through the fence, Gary. Well, she was all right. I think she was more concerned about any damage to the truck. Gary, believe it or not, what you're looking at is the actual surface these monster trucks are running on. Now, as you well know, this afternoon there was a torrential rainstorm that came through. For about 45 minutes, it just rained cats and dogs. Well, then the sun came out and it dried everything up, and all the drivers thought, hmm, we got a dry track to run on. Well, that's not the case, because now that the sun has gone back down, the moisture is starting to come up. And as you can see, it's turning everything into nothing but goo. Now, the moisture coming up on the starting line means one thing. It's going to be tough to get off the starting line. But you have a compounded problem on the other end of the trap because that same moisture is getting a shutdown area. And the shutdown area here is grass. And as you well know, there's nothing in the world slicker than wet grass. Back to you, Gary. I like your verbiage, goo. It's not a tacky track. It's gooey as we take a look at uh, the matchup here with Ray Porkowski, the far lane, Andy Brass, the near lane. Dodge against Ford. This is round two action from Springfield, Missouri. And you can see how moist that track is there in the uh, staging area. It's going to be all Andy Brass. The Bigfoot Ford takes the victory. Andy Brass with a ET of 5.21. Well, a pair of Fords right here. The Power Wheels Bigfoot, the nearest lane to the camera. And that's the lane everybody wants to be in. So let's see what happens here. Colt Cobra in snake fight in the far lane, a pair of Fords. Well, if any animal in the world is going to like gooey, slimy weather, it's got to be a snake. Let's see if he can do it. Hey, he's out on him. Oh, he had a good hole shot. Yeah, well, I don't know. It looked like Runty got him at the very end by perhaps a headlight. 538. 
538 for Dan Runty to a 546. Indeed, the snake bite had the whole shot. Of course, that was earlier, and this is now. Fred Shea for the near lane, the big dodge against the Ford of Dan Runty in the far lane for the right to meet Andy Brass for the championship here in Springfield. As they stage, who's it going to be? Well, I tell you, you can cut the drama out there with a knife. Again, both very slow off the Oh, Schaefer's line. in trouble, Gary. Now, Fred Schaefer had a very poor run as Dan Runty advances to the championship round at 543, but not a good run for Fred Schaefer. He had trouble with that truck. He got off to the right. Now, this is going to be a tough one to pick because we have seen Dan Runty really come on this season. He's second yeah. in the pen to points right now, but he's uh, certainly closing the gap down on Andy. Uh, he's the kind of guy, if he's a sprint car driver, he'd be trying the lane that nobody else tries. And it's worked for him all year long, so you, you don't mess with success. You know, if everybody else style. is running the cush, he's going to go down yeah, to the exactly. inside and try the pull. Or if they're on the bottom, he'll run up top. But tonight, he just got to go to the other end. He has no choice but take that left lane because Andy Brass had no choice. He takes the right. Look at him spin the yeah, tire. A lot of wheel slippage on the starting line. And it is. And oh! Was Brass disqualified? Uh, I don't know. The rules say those front two tires must hit the uh, object they're jumping. Apparently not. 536. They give Andy Brass the 536. Dan Ray the 556. So Andy Brass wins it. There was some question there at the finish if Andy Brass had made a legal pass. Watch again, watch the left side of your screen and watch the far side, watch the far tires. They have to make contact. Yeah, they hit something. Look how far over he, man. He's talking about high siding a truck. But that puts him in the national points lead. That battle, we, even, we completely forgot about that. Here's another shot of it. He was almost out of the view of the camera, Gary. Looking at the current points, 720. The margin for Andy Brass over Runty, then Schaefer, Daphne, and Colt Cobra. And here's your winner. Gary, I tell you what, the big story could be right here on his license plate. Andy Brass could have the number one truck this year. Uh, very honestly, you're just beating up on these guys. Well, I, we've been doing a pretty good job with the truck this year. You know, we come out with uh, this truck. This is the old Wildfoot truck, so we're running the same truck as, as what we won, won the points championship with last year. So I feel we got just a little bit of an edge. You know, we come out here with an old older truck. I know the gearing to use in the truck. The motors are the same. though. the John Kazi Henny's been doing us a real well job. You know, we just got our pill system, the air meters and stuff, you know, we've been using. We got all the readings from last year, so I can pretty well dial the truck in right off the bat. I don't got to sit out here and make all my runs and try to get the truck dialed in. So it, it works out pretty well for us. The state of Missouri has definitely the most per capita monster truck operations in America. It all started down the road about 10 years ago with Bob Chandler. And like you say, he just crunched the metal. It turned into a phenomenon and has gone all over the world and now crowns a world champion. Speaking of world champion, the same Bob Chandler that started it, designs and owns a truck that for the last two years has won the world championship. And it's over my right shoulder. As a matter of fact, that truck currently leads in the Penda Points Championship for this year's world championship. But Chandler also owns a second truck, the Bigfoot Power Wheels, and the Bigfoot and the Bigfoot Power Wheels have had a slapping contest everywhere they've gone this year and literally dominated the Pin to Point Series. But there is a trump card here. The trump card is not even a driver, it's not even a truck, it's a crew member. Gene Patterson, who used to work for Bob Chandler in the Bigfoot operation, has gone over to Dan Patrick's team, a Chevrolet team, in the Samson truck, and they are the only people that have been able to break the win streak by the Ford camp. Back to you, Gary. Well, Samson right now is sixth in the point standings as we take a look at those Penda points. Andy Brass leading Runte, Schaefer, Daphne, and Colt Cobra. Want to take you back now to qualifying to show you the fastest pass ever in monster truck competition. This is qualifying Andy Brass with a 4.93. Previous quick was a 4.96 set by the other Bigfoot truck of Runte, but Andy Brass came out and laid the gauntlet down with a 93. Andy Brass would follow that up with the best time of round one, punching out the Dodge Express of Ray Portkowski. Andy's run was a 5.15. So this, once again, a highlight from round one competition. Also in round one was Colt Cobra taking on Mark Hall in the Executioner. And watch this wild finish by Hall. Well, Mark Hall is one of the guys that's trying to get a luck streak going for him, and it was not to be at this event. He was all over the shutdown area. A wild run in round one by Dan Patrick, who gets the front end up in the air. Talk about a white-knuckle ride. Dan, it seemed like it almost 
wanted to come over backwards on you. What caused that? I shifted late in the high gear and qualifying. I shifted too soon, or I'm sorry, too late in uh, first gear. So I wanted to settle down. It wasn't going to settle down, so I just pushed a button and hit her in the high, and the boy, <laughs> it got up there. Also in round one, Pam Botters, DQ. She had the red light. She was going up against Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Well, I'll tell you what, Pam was in the lane that was less than ideal. Schaefer was running good. That she did what she had to do, simple as that. If she could have cut, it, cut him down on the starting line, she'd have gone into the next round. Not to be the case. But also in that round, Gary, Gary Wiggins in the Carolina Crusher was also a DQ as he goes out of bounds. So all of a sudden, the, yeah, the story of the night is don't want to go on the left side of this race track. Round two kicks off with a pair of Fords, the Bigfoot Ford of Andy Brad. That's the Bigfoot Cruiser, and he pulls up against Kirk Gabney's overkill. Now, Kirk has been a quick qualifier. He's been very fast in qualifying over the past several races, but has not done all that well in competition. And earlier, Army Armstrong talked about some Texas technology with Marty Garza. Gary, we're standing down in the pit area with Marty Garza, one-time top-rate driver. Now he's taking all his energies and designing and developing trucks. He's hooked up with Kirk Dabney on the Extreme Overkill vehicle and have a whole new concept on the shock absorbers. Now, tell me what you're doing different than the other guys, because whatever it is seems to be really working, Marty. Uh, yes, Army. We're working closely with Custer Off-Road Shocks uh, out of Long Beach, California, and we've developed a new swing arm type suspension system. It's the first monster truck to incorporate this, this type of suspension. Okay, now the shocks, I understand you can actually adjust these shocks in between rounds so you can tweak the chassis just by working with the shock. Yes, these shocks are fully externally adjustable, whereas most other trucks have to pull their shocks apart and do all their valving changes internally. This is all external. Okay, the name Custer and Off-Road tells me a lot of this technology came out of the Baja-type desert racers in California. Is that, is that where it came from? Yes, Monster Trucks have evolved into basically off-road race trucks only with large tires. There's a look at Andy Brass, the Bigfoot Cruiser. Nearest the camera, the far lane, overkill, Kirk Dabney. Remember the discussion in the pit area? Nobody wants the left lane, Brass, quick time. Dabney running tough for the first half. He runs him all the way out to the end, Gary, who won it? Well, Andy Brass takes the victory. His clocking is 5.11 ET. Kirk Dabney is 5.36. And there is a look at Bigfoot going away from you. Yeah, this is a view we haven't seen before. Look what happens in no man's land. He's still on the throttle, picking up all kind of dust. And, of course, he's going to fly right over the top of it. Dan Runty is presently second in the Penda Point Series Championship behind his teammate, Andy Brass. And Fred Schaefer's been playing catch-up so far this season. It looks like Runte, yeah, Runte by a wheel. Yeah, but I tell you what, he was he was airing it out on the other end. Schaefer was pulling him back. 526 for Runte. Now remember, the fast loser, as we told you, will come back. There's Fred Schaefer's 531. The Chevrolets are not able to flex their muscles and get past the second round of competition here. This is a story within a story. All the manufacturers involved here, you're looking at Dodge Boy right over there, the barefoot Fred Schaefer, all the Dodge troops are putting their hopes with him. Meanwhile, Andy Brass, the Bigfoot team, you know they got to represent the Blue Oval Bunch and the Ford. Pendleliner's putting up the money to see who's got the best monster truck in the world. Well, right Chevrolet. now, Brass is leading the oh. Penda Point Series, whereas Fred Schaefer has been playing catch-up. Now, if he could knock Brass out right here, go a long way in helping his car. Well, like I say, it add points to his side of the ledger, but take them away from Brass. It's going to be tough to do. I'll be real honest with you. Schaefer's in a lane that is least desirable. How do you like what put that? Yeah, that was very, very uh, politically correct on your part, as Andy Brass takes the victory, and his clocking is a 5-2-3. Looks like the track has slowed down just a little bit of 558 for Fred Schaefer. Well, it looks like it's slowed down during the course of the evening. It has, but it's slowing down the same for everybody. So, you know, everybody's just too awesome. But you're motors. right, everybody's slowing down. Yeah, everybody's going down at 10. Andy Brass coming right at you from the end zone camera. Look at the altitude. Look at the air. The power wheels Bigfoot against the Ford Snakebite. Cold Culver, there's a look at Snakebite, and there's a look. At Dan Runte. Runte was the second fastest qualifier this evening. What you're looking at is a toy manufactured dream come true. Every little boy in America likes Bigfoot or they like Col Cobra with the snake bite. So snake bite was the third fast qualifier, so this is a real good matchup right here. Ford against Ford, it's snake bite. Snake, yes. yeah, snake bite oh, takes right. him in that in that favorable lane. 
They fight Colt Cobra a 516. I believe that was faster than what Andy Brass just turned in in uh, Bigfoot. That was, and uh, Power was one of 31, but a 16 is quick. And here is Andy Brass. I tell you what, Andy, your championship is looking a lot better right now because you just put the Dodge out and the Bigfoot Power Wheel just went out by snake bite. That's got to help you with the points deal. Yes, it does. You know, we've been kind of watching it. It's been a tough season, you know, and everybody's running so so hard this year and so close that uh, it's going to be anybody's game. And, and these guys are getting to the finals, you know, and you're just praying that you can you can knock them out early. But thanks to everybody like Ford, Firestone, Built, BDS, you know, Trailmaster, everybody that's that sponsors us. You know, we just we got a good combination here. The truck's working good for us, and then we're going to put her in the first place. Colt, let me get in here real quick. You've said oh, for a long time you can handle the Bigfoot truck. You're going to get your shot at him. That's right. Like I said, we come out here earlier this year. Our times weren't as uh, as low as we'd like them to be. We did uh, some changes to the truck. We came here to Springfield, done good here every year. We're really pumped up about it going into the final against Bigfoot here. We pulled lane choice on them. Like I said earlier, it means a lot. I think we have that edge and the snake running the way it is tonight. Hopefully, we'll pull out a win here again. Snake fight, as we told you, will have lane choice. Colt Cover will put Andy Brass over in the left lane where he has yet to run tonight. And prior to going to the lane, Army asked Mr. Brass about that. We've been watching the left lane. The left lane's been coming around, you know. We looked at it earlier. They had a lump in the first lane. It was sending everybody over the first set of cars. We're not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to go over there and run my run like I would run it over here in the right lane. And I'm not going to worry about the lane change and hope we can just pull it down through there again like we did a while ago. Well, there's a tight shot of Andy Brass, and there is the nose of Snake Fight as they stage here for the championship. Crew chief looks on his wife. A little nervous back there in the staging area. But he, Andy Brass, the crew, did make a change in the truck. They made it a gear change. He's out on it. Oh, half track. Oh, Something no, goes away. Snake fight. Snake fight. Boy, Mrs. Brass, a tough break. Snake bite takes a win with a 518, but Andy Brass was reading him the ride out until something went away at about half track. Yeah, that was mechanical because Andy was right there until something happened, as you say, Army, half track, and Colt Cobra takes the win. So what appeared to be a good opportunity for Andy Brass to gain some ground on Dan Runty, his teammate in the point standings, went awry because of some mechanical problems. Yeah, exactly right. Well, you know, this is racing. That's what it's all about. We're not taking anything away from the old snake bike crew. He said he was going to drill him. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Looking right at you. Let's go to Victory Lane Army with your winner. Yeah. Well, <laughs> dreams come true, partner. You got a bunch of fans here now. That's right. Springfield's always been good to us. Came back here again tonight. Cool air came out. Truck started running faster. We ran consistent all night. This truck definitely a winner. You saw it here tonight. We're going right to the top. Talk about being pumped up. There's the sign of the snake, the number one side. There's your champion. As we'll take a look at the point standings, over a thousand point margin now for Andy Brass and his Dan Runty, Fred Schaefer, Colt Cobra, and Paul Schaefer now in fifth position. So once again, we've reached the halfway point. We're about ready for action in round two. So let's go track side to Army Armstrong. Gary, right now, we are just a little bit past halfway in the season. Matter of fact, just one race past halfway. We're not going to concede a championship to anybody, but this guy right here, Andy Brass and Bob Chandler's foot, two years in a row national champ, current national points leader. Watch it, because what's happening here is this team of Bob Chandler's, the Bigfoot Cruiser, the blue truck, and the Bigfoot Power Wheels team, of Dan Runty, are comparing information. Man, they're just like two computers that every time they make a run, they spit out info that the other team can use. None of the other teams are doing that. They're all trying to do it privateer style, and it's just not going to work. What's going to have to happen? I don't care if you drive a Dodge or a Chevrolet. You better get with the guy next to you and take your knowledge to him, let him give his knowledge to you in trying to beat these guys. But the way things stand right now, the Blue Oval Bunch are the bad boys of the sport. And they're not taking any prisoners. They're going for the third world championship. Back to you, Gary. Army, as we mentioned, we're getting ready for round two competition. But first, let's take you back and show you some highlights from round one. Dan Runty was the quick qualifier. Now, he got a bye run in round one. And he steps up to better his qualifying pass by a full tenth of a second, 5.05. Also in round one. The fifth fast qualifier, the Dodge Express of Ray Brakowski against Dan Patrick and Sampson. Patrick was the 10th fast qualifier, and the Dodge Express took that one. But the 
big story of the year and the day could be Kirk Dabney, who's the overkill driver this year, and he has qualified so quick all year long, dominating and qualifying, but getting past the first round, another story. He didn't have that problem with Gary Wiggins driving Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher, no match for the Mountain Motor Ford. Andy Brass, the fourth fast qualifier in Bigfoot against the young lady Pam Botters in the buggy van, and this was Andy Brass takes that victory with a 5.06. Also in the first round competition, Paul Schaefer comes out with the wing, and it seemed to work for him as he goes up against one of the hot and coming teams, the Hall Brother Racing Team, but Mark Hall, no match for the wing this time, Gary. Colt Cobra, the second quick qualifier here this afternoon, would take on Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Fred Schaefer loses this win at a 5.35. Colt wins it at 5.08. So Colt will continue on into round two. The fast qualifier here this afternoon with Dan Levy. He'll be in the lane closest to our camera shot right there. Ray Porkowski in the dodge. So it's dodge against Ford here in round two. Both trucks working a line. Dan Rundy is dead on that tree. Truck, that's just almost a perfect run. Whoa, Porkowski's having some trouble. Oh, problems. yes, the major problem is he takes down the fence. You can see the damage under the truck. He lost some suspension yep. there. The rear end went away on that truck is what caused the problem. He did a yeoman job of keeping it at least right side up. Dabney is, is an awfully good driver. He's always dealt with equipment that wasn't really up to spec. On the other side of the ledger, Andy Brass, class equipment all the way through. He also a good driver. Oh, Brass just does ease that fender by ever so close, but Brass wins at the Cruiser at 5.16. Well, Cole Cobra knows what he has to do is get past this Chevrolet, and the Chevrolet knows he's got an uphill battle. Paul Schaefer has proven himself in the sport of mud racing, a past world champion. Right now comes out to go monster truck racing with no wing Colt's on the far in trouble. side. Both, well, of both of them. Both of them. Both of them in trouble. pulls off. This could be a mistake. Now, let's watch Paul. Paul gets his going again, continues on. Cole will be disqualified, and Paul could win this one with the slowest winning time in the history of monster truck racing. Yeah, but Gary, when you go to the bank on Monday morning, they don't care how fast or how slow it was. They just want to make sure the money was good. Well, the money was good. good, but it's a 1675 for the Monster Patrol, and Colt Cobra was dq So, a mistake for Colt to drive out. Oh, look at this. Meanwhile, the man who stands as our fast loser, Kirk Dabney, appears to be having problems. What if he's not able to continue? Let's go back and take a look at the replay. Cobra comes right at you. Now, right here, he gets in trouble and pulls off. This was a mistake. He should have gone on over that second batch of cars. Meanwhile, here was your winner. Real quick, it sounded like the motor just cut clean on you when you went over the first jump. But a win is a win is a win. And I know you take them any way you can, but do you have any idea what happened? Well, the motor hesitated, and it, like, died. And, and I got out of it, and I looked over, and I seen snake bite broke something. I said, I better finish this race. Fred Schaefer, in fact, a fast loser from round one, is hopping back in his machine. Apparently, he's going to race more. Let's listen in if we can. Get in and get ready. We'll be done. Well, let's go down trackside to Army Armstrong. Well, Gary, the drama was short-lived. The drive shaft in the overkill truck, there was just no way they could get it fixed in time. Operations manager uh, George Carpenter came over and said, look, fellas, let's be above board about it. We're running for points. Schaefer's ready to go. There's no way they can get this thing ready to go. The ruling is it has to be a competitive run. They could piecemeal it and just go to the line and get their points and everything, but everybody wants to see racing. And I got a feeling that Fred Schaefer do the same thing for these guys, too. So the stage is set. Schaefer's back in it, and it dodge. But he is going to be in a bad lane. Let's see what happens. It will be Ford against Dodge and Ford against Chevy. Let's quickly go down in the Army. Is there a problem with Barefoot? I tell you what, Gary, the drama still built. Even when Fred went to the starting line, the motor leaned out. They actually checked the kill switch, but when they checked the kill switch and went to start up again, it wouldn't start. That's why the drama was building, because the crew members had to come out, prime the engine, get him going again. Now, let's go racing. Oh, you have to wonder. Fred gets a second chance. They have some trouble getting that Dodge fired. There it is. There's a good look at the barefoot Dodge. Fred Schaefer out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois. The big question, can that big Dodge who just got fired be like the Phoenix and come back to win this thing? Come back from the ashes of defeat. We'll find out. Dan Runty staging the Power Wheels Bigfoot. He is second in the Penda Point Series right now behind his teammate Andy Brass. Every win today has come out of the lane that Runty's in right now. 
Schaefer has got to throw caution to the wind and go after this kid. It's not going to work here. Nope. Runty takes this one again in that near lane. Runty takes the victory. He goes on to the championship round of 5-11. Well, the championship round setting up, but on the other side, Mike Botter, one of the privateers in the sport, the boogie van owner, driven by his wife, Pam, loads up, heads down the road. The big boys, the pros, the monsters are set up for their final challenge. Runty and Brass, sounds like a accounting firm on Wall Street. That's not the case today. They're two bad boys in the Blue Oval Bunch Ford. Ford making a final for I don't know how many times this year. They are really, for such thing as a manufacturer dominating a sport, Ford has done it this year in this circuit, Gary. Yeah, and it's somewhat of a surprise because last year at this time, we really thought that Fred Schaefer would be a guy to reckon with in the Dodge. And the only person to break the Ford's stranglehold on it was a Chevrolet. So, you know, this board is going and growing, and, and every week, everybody in their heart thinks they can get these guys. So far, it's not been the case. In the semis, remember, it was Dan Runty's 5'11 to Andy Brass's 5'13 that gave Runte lane choice, and to no one's surprise, he takes the near lane. Exactly. Let's see what's going to happen. We've been talking all day long. It's time to race right now. They were ever so close to semis, which would indicate this should be a real close one. Oh, look at Ronte. Not really all that close. Whoa, Ronte came out of Well, Andy Brass had to make some chassis adjustments. Ronte goes at 06. Woo, quick time of the day, a 506 on the final. But Andy Brass knew he's going to have to take a shot in the dark to do some chassis changes. It just didn't work for him. He powered up in no man's land. Runty goes to the other end, Gary. So Runte wins it, trying to close the gap on Andy Brass, who's leading now in the Penda Points Championship. We take a look again, and Brass just could not get that truck to settle down in no man's land. And Dan Runte takes the victory, and he's standing by pit side with Army Armstrong. Well, Dan, I tell you what, congratulations to you and the crew. Everybody really had to work for this one. Thanks, Army. Yeah, they did. You know, the crew's been working real hard between the two trucks. we got to give them all the credit in the world. It's just not everything, you know, to come out here and be able to work with a bunch of guys like we work with, including the guys back at the shop, take care of us, build reliable trucks, along with Ford, Ford Motor Company. It's just great, Army. I love it. We can show you now what we were talking about with the Ford dominance in the uh, Penda Point Series. Andy Brass continues to lead. Dan Runty has closed in ever so slightly, however. Fred Schaefer back in third, then the Ford of Colt Cobra and Paul Schaefer's Chevrolet in the fifth spot. Current standings after seven of the 13 events. And here is a look at your fast qualifier today. This is Colt Cobra. And he had a clocking of 5.37 in the Ford, and look at the air, a tough landing right there for your fast qualifier. Now, Dan Patrick, the only Chevrolet to really be able to flex his muscle this year. Patrick, a professional racer, decided he's gonna step up and run with these guys, but in order to do it, you gotta attack the track. And that run shows us he's not afraid to go after the throat. Rough landing, but a good run. Now, once again, we show you some highlights from round one, Dan Patrick and Fred Schaefer. Fred in the far lane, and the barefoot Dodge just does eke out the victory over Dan Patrick. Barefoot, a 538 ET. Yeah, but Dan Patrick with a 541 can still be a player to get back into the loser bracket, Gary. It was Colt Cobra against Don Van Lu. Van Lu still trying to get the handle on that Arizona sports shirt. Chevrolet just not going to be the player. They're, everybody's landing different. You know what I'm saying? Watch these trucks. Nobody is doing things like the other guys. Mark Hall in the Executioner has not made it into round two very often this year, but in a mild upset, he would advance with Ray Porkowski going out of bounds. I tell you what, Mark Hall and his brother are good monster truck people. They just need one thing. All racers need it at one time or another. They just need to get a good break. Okay, what we're looking at is the starting line area, and there's parity here. All the drivers seem to like both lanes. We don't have a good lane or a bad lane here. As a matter of fact, I'm standing on the first set of cars that they're jumping or rolling, and none of the drivers are having a bit of problem here. They say it's smooth sailing. As a matter of fact, in no man's land, the area between the two jumps, same, same. Everybody's having a good time. But the big difference, the playground, as the driver called it, is after the second jump, that's where all the trucks are really starting to twist and shout when they get up in the air. Back to you, Gary. Well, a number of these trucks are utilizing Dan Patrick built chassis. Right. Exactly. All right, the first pairing now in round two competition. Snake bite a little late to stage on the throttle. And it's going to be Snake Bite. Cobra. Whoa, Patrick almost high sides. 
puts it back down. Cole Coble with a 521. The Ford guys, they have got a lock on the chassis. Everything they seem to do is working on the blue side of the slate, on the red side of the slate, everything they seem to do jumps back in their face and shoots them in the foot or something. Well, Fred Schaefer trying to gain some points in this season-long championship. It is still door handle to door handle, and who won it? Oh, that was too close to call visually. There's still Andy Brass, a 538. Let's get the time on Fred Schaefer as Brass stops. Yes, Fred Schaefer does it. 535. That's exactly what he had to do, man. The pressure was on both of them. You talk about a good clean race, just kick back and watch it. The light goes green, they go to the other end. No man's land, they settle down, make horsepower, pull a trigger, and fly to the finish line. And it's a DOD oh. night. Watch again, Andy Brass has a very rough landing. This is a pulling track, there's a ledge right there and he gets off that ledge, see right there and has difficulty hanging on. But Fred Schaefer has to be extremely happy. He's down there with Army Armstrong. Well, the big story has been barefoot coming out of hibernation. I believe you may have turned the corner, Fred. Army, uh, after last weekend, we turned every bolt nut on this truck because uh, we're gonna do it one way or the other. So could this be Fred Schaefer's night in the barefoot dodge? As competition continues, another Ford, that's the uh, Bigfoot Power Wheels. Now, Schaefer has knocked one Bigfoot out tonight, but he's still got this guy in front of him tonight and in a point shape. But what you're looking at right now is one of the guys I'm glad to see in this round of the competition. Finally given a chance to get some national exposure to the Hall Brothers racing team. This Chevrolet team out of Champaign, Illinois, has got their hands full of that big blue oval bunch Ford over there. They leave the line together. Bigfoot's out on him. Bigfoot yeah, that was away. never a doubt. Never, never in question there. Dan Runte, there's Executioner's 554. Five, but Runte ran a 511. Barefoot's crew, they are sweat BBs. They know what has to be done. He's got to get past this guy. Now he has to get past Cole Cobra to get a shot at Dan Runty. He needs points. He needs points in a big way. This is not a game of hand grenades. Close doesn't count. He's got to beat him on the other end of this track. It's getting close. You can feel the drama in the air. Just like any race, anytime you go somewhere, they roll into the lights. Schaefer goes in early. Normally he doesn't do that. Snake bite rolls in. This is going to be a war. Is it going to be, Army? Ford, big time on the big end. Snake bite as the Dodge crew conversing now from crew to the truck. Uh, the Colt Cobra at a 508 will continue on. Fred Schaefer heads for the barn at 536. And Colt Cobra will have lane selection for the championship go. Hey, that youngster's getting ready for it. And he is kind of flirting with disaster there because. Well, not in the final, he's not, but there's that little down dip to the right side, but I guess he figures, hey, with the final, let's pull the trigger and go for this thing. Both drivers, oh, a little, ah, there you go, Gary. What he did, he burst the throttle left lane and screwed the driver in the far lane, made him back on the throttle, so he just flat out thought him on that one. That's no going. drag racing stunt, is it not? Yeah, exactly. You burst the throttle, make the other guy leave, then you stop. Then he stops and you go. Dan Runte got boxed on that one. Dan Runte, red lights, he disqualified. Look again, watch the truck left side. Now watch him, he'll move, then the other guy will move, but he'll stop right there, and then he stops, boom. Runte, red lights, and Colt Cobra takes the victory. Army? Hey, can you take them any way you can get them, but that, that was sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it was, you know, Snakebite's been running hard this year, and you know, we came back you know, last, last weekend we got a win, come back hard and strong, and Snake Bites in the finals. And one, number one. But the lesson to be learned here is to watch the Christmas tree. Don't watch the guy next to you. Yeah, but the good Lord gives you something called peripheral vision. When something moves, you're going to move with it, too. You know, when thousands of seconds counts, that's what it's all about. It's kind of like a slide job in a race car. Now, the replay on the screen is going to show us real quick. Watch what happens. Burp, stop, go, stop, go. Now we got a good race for us. Yeah, but it's all over right there. He won it right there, and here is your winner. I t I tell you what, Colt, I bet that guy's life passed in front of him when you burped that throttle and the light didn't re go red on him. Uh, I've been trying to play the lights. Lights are a big part of the racing here when it's this close. I, I thought it was going. I started to go and stopped, and I guess I brought my motor up. He went. I didn't know what happened to him, if he had broke or what, or if he was right behind me. 
just stay with it all the way down through there and uh looks like we came out with a win everybody here has been teasing us all night about our little puppy motor but i guess the puppy's loose tonight i tell you the puppy was howling tonight congratulations thank you army well with all the activity here this evening fred schaefer falls back to fourth in the pen to points standings we'll take a look now as andy brass continues to lead but closing in is dan ronte we have not seen a non-Ford truck in the finals since stop four in Bloomsburg. In a nutshell, that just kind of underscores the Ford dynasty this season in monster truck competition. But hey, let's not talk about yesterday. Let's talk about today. And with more on today's competition, here's Army Armstrong. Gary, bingo. Up until now, the word win in this series was spelled F-O-R-D. But we may be seeing a turning point. Last time out, Dodge said they had found a handle they've been looking for all year long. Today, two Dodges, Dodge Express and Barefoot, have made it through the first round of competition. They think that they have what it takes now to rein these fours in. Because up until now, just like I say, the word win is F-O-R-D. They're going to try to change that spelling to D-O-D-G-E. Let's see what's going to happen. Back to you, Gary. Here are your fast qualifiers today at Canfield. Andy Brass over Colt Cobra. Fred Schaefer in the Dodge Barefoot was third, then Dan Runty, and then Porkowski. So you can see how evenly matched this field appears to be. Now, this was in qualifying. As we look back, a rough ride here for Colt Cobra. Look at this landing. What happens, the right lane at Canfield has a unique, about a four-foot drop-off. The drivers are aware of it. When you're flying through the air, first thing you want to do when you hit is go to the left. That's what he was trying to do. In round one competition, Ray Borkowski would strike a somewhat similar pose in defeating Paul Schaefer in the Monster Patrol. Hang on. Yeah, he does so. He comes as close to high side without going over as anybody. In other highlights from round one, Mark Hall, the executioner, Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Hall has a mechanical problem. The barefoot truck goes on to record a 518 ET. We told you earlier, the barefoot boys are on a mission. They're kind of like the Blues Brothers today. Ninth fastest qualifier, Don Van Loo against Dan Runty, the fourth fast qualifier, and Runty takes the victory in round one. And again, some trouble in the shutdown area for Don Van Loo. Right lane, four foot drop off. Remember, that's in the back of everybody's mind that runs that lane. Back in was wanting to come around on me. We saved it. I don't know how, but it was wanting to take a roll for me. Did you think it was going over? I thought at any minute it was going over. Yeah, it's real close. Other competition from round one, Dan Patrick in Samson against Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. Luck of the qualifying puts these two bad Chevrolets against each other. And all these guys are having trouble in that one lane in the shutdown area, the lane nearest the grandstand. There's Gary Porter's 529, but it was Dan Patrick at 515 that won that the chance to go to round two. Also in round one, Cold Cobra would defeat Pam Botters in the boogie van. Let me tell you something, Pam Botters is a monster truck driver. If they can come up with some bucks and a good sponsor, they could be major players next year. It's a good family operation. She does a great job of driving, but today, the snake got her. Gary, I want you to notice something. It's about 24 inches from the top of the tire to the bottom of the fender here. But look how the fender is being rubbed by the tire. This tire is coming up and hitting so hard when they make contact with the ground, it's actually coming up and making contact with the body. These guys are literally nose diving them into the ground or nose diving at that finish line or diving head first at the finish line, whatever you want to call it. They're hitting a ton when they hit on the other end. Back to you, Gary. That's a combination of 10,000 pounds of truck and a whole lot of shock travel. Oh, you're exactly right. And so much of the technology for the shock absorbers come from the off-road, the Baja type racers, these long arm shocks, these special chassis they're putting together to allow to get that travel in there. They know you've got to make the wheel travel to be on the ground here. Fred Schaefer in the lane nearest the camera in the barefoot truck taking on Dan Runty. It is for Dan Runty. So Runty continues to close in on Andy Brass. And once again, Fred Schaefer really needed this victory to move up in the point standing. Well, both Dodges did. Uh, you know, you had two fours in this round. They put two Dodges out. That what will Andy Brass in the Bigfoot Cruiser. What you're looking at there is a notorious cantilever suspension that Bob Chandler came up with. They kind of kept it under wraps. They keep a low profile on it, but it's working, believe me. Yeah, it gets the, the chassis to settle down in the no man's land. That's where he really makes the worst. Yeah, power. we're talking about all the travel. Well, he, his shock absorbers can travel just as much as the other guys, but the wheel will move further. 
through geometry. Now, you kids sitting home watch this on TV, you go ask your math teacher how a cantilever suspension works. I'm sure they'll be happy to tell you. Old Uncle Army and Uncle Gary can't right now. That's right. Well, you can write an essay on it for extra credit points in your geometry class. That's right. But right now, both motors, 460 cubic inch, lower drive service repair, Ford engine. We got a race, buddy. Who's it gonna be? We just saw a race. What's Who the is number? It be? As close as it possibly could be. A 512. Is this another dead heat? A 512 for Colt and a 513 for Andy. Oh my, Colt Cobra. Man, if they were playing hand grenades today, he he's hitting close. That's as close as you can get without having a dead heat. Well, he's already had that. He just wins this one by a TT. Look at this. By a fang. Exactly. A snaggle tooth, if you will. <laughs> the Bigfoot Power Wheels entry, and he is closing in on Andy Brass in the Penda Point Series. The last three or four weeks, he's really closed the margin down. A win here would uh, actually, I think, give him the points lead. But you got to get past this Chevrolet, and like I say, Dan Patrick and Patterson, they are going to go for your throat big time. Not going to work for them. That four is going into the final. That will be Dan Runty as he takes that win with a 5-0-0 ET. What a run for Dan Runty and the Bigfoot. And there's the 5-17 for Dan Patrick. Five flat is awesome with the 10,000-pound truck, Gary. Well, you know this guy wants you in the worst way. He's going to do anything he can to beat you, but that's racing. That's the caliber of racing we're having right now. That's right. We're going out here. We have lane choice. Did a faster time last run than he did. That's going to make a difference, I think. We just got to go out here, cut a good light, like I said earlier. That's making all the difference in the world, and see why, see how it comes out. If we can win again here tonight, it'd be two in a row. Be a good shot in the arm. Good shot, or good shot in the arm for us and for it. Get the power down to these fire stones. Get it down that track. Be first across the line. We'll meet you in the winter, sir. Does a snake have an arm? There's a confident driver right there is Colt Cobra and Dan Ronte for the second straight outing. These two are meeting for the championship. Okay, now you got to go back and realize that the last time they met, Ronte kind of shot himself in the foot. Colt Cobra played a little mind game on him and got away with it. Now, I would be willing to bet a week's payment, a week of your pay. A week of my pay. Of your pay. It won't happen That again. will not happen again. Dan Ronte has that snake in his crosshair. He will uh, not I make would, a I would tend to agree this time he'll not be snookered like he was the last time. And if you didn't see our show last week, we can tell you that these same two stayed. Colt jumped and got back from Burpton, as he said, got Burpton. back on the break. And then when Runte burped it, he couldn't get it stopped. He red lighted. Snake burped and gold and the big Watch foot it now. <laughs> All right, here you are, Dan Runte and Colt Cobra. Dan trying to take over the Penda Point Series lead after uh, nine events of a 13 race series. Good heads up start, Colt Cobra. Dan him. Runte is there. Dan Runte has him. And he has picked up the Penda Points lead with the points picked up here this afternoon. Colt Cobra 517, and Dan will go a 508. So Dan Runte takes over the Penda Point Series lead. Once again, this was the ninth race of 13 events as he goes around Andy Brass, Colt Cobra's third, Schaefer is fourth, and Patrick is now fifth. Army? <laughs> Gary, I tell you what, we're down here with the uh, new national points leader being congratulated by his crew by 380 points, buddy. You're the guy they're all chasing now. Congratulations. Thanks, Army. Like I said, the truck's been working really well. We got to thank the crew. Every round we went out here, ran a little bit faster. The truck's working good. Firestone tires are hooking up. Everything's going well for us. We really can't complain about everything, anything. You know, it is. It doesn't come easy, though. I mean, between every round, everybody is working like crazy. I mean, you're, you're not backing into this thing. You're definitely having to earn your way. No, I mean, there's something different here that we ain't seen in a while either is the lanes are real similar here, so there's not a real big lane choice. I feel the left lane's a little better, but that's my preference, and that's got a lot to do with the way things are going here. The lure of the Midway is based on thrill and hope. Two ingredients that we find in monster truck competition. The thrill, well, the drivers amaze the fans and thrill themselves with the wildest five-second ride in all of motorsports. And the hope is there, too. They hope to win the big one, the Penda Point Series Championship. And now, with more on tonight's festivities, here's Army Armstrong. 
Well, Gary, they're almost like carnies. They build a tent, they put it up, they tear it down, and they move on to another town. We're talking about the Monster Truck Fin the Point Series, and we're looking kind of like looking down a Maid Midway when a carnival comes to your hometown. We got the bear alive in the second round. Samson's coming back. He's a strong man. Of course, the old Bigfoot boy, Sasquatch. They're staying strong in this game along with the Snake Man. So all I can say about round two is hurry, hurry, hurry. Come to the Midway. We're going second round racing right now. Now talk about a wild ride. This is Don Van Loo tossing what's left of his transmission, and we'll show you how he shells it out. This was from qualifying earlier. This is Don Van Loo and Magnum Fours. Keep an eye at him in the no man's land. The transmission just explodes. They're making so much horsepower. The safety blanket contained most of the shrapnel, but Van Loo really took a ride. He was literally sitting there on an A-bomb there for a second. He becomes an early spectator here in Canfield. Now, also a tough time for Pam Botters in round one. Watch this hard landing for the Boogie Van. Pam Botters, one of the young up-and-coming drivers on the circuit, just needs one very important thing that all racers need, a break. But Schaefer's not going to give it to her. And from rough landings to tight calls with the Magnum Force out, Fred Schaefer caught a single. But watch how close he comes to the far side barriers. Yeah, but we're not playing hand grenades, so close doesn't count. <laughs> he goes to the next round. Well, the hottest time so far turned in by Dan Runty, a blistering 498 to Gary Porter's 506. Dan Runty definitely holding the high ground in this competition. He and that 460 cubic inch Ford Allen Root horsepower are showing away tonight. Andy Brass, big foot, and here is Andy's uh, by run earlier. He was the fast qualifier. But he dropped off from a 499 to a 508 in that by run. Both coming in the same lane, and right now he's in that uh, far lane from our camera position there. From a dead stop, 250 feet over two obstacles, jumping 20 feet in the air in less than five seconds. Oh, just another day at the office or on the midway in, in a 10,000 pound truck. truck. There you go. We are having fun now. Ford Chevrolet, let's see who's going to be, Gary. Round two is now underway. It's going to be all Ford. No contest as Andy Brass takes the victory in Bigfoot of 5.03. So a tad quicker than that by run, not as fast as he qualified. There's Paul Schaefer's 5.55. There is a look at Fred Schaefer strapped in the cockpit of the big Dodge barefoot. And behind him, you see the Bigfoot power wheels of Dan Runta. He was simply on fire in round one of 4.98. He's gotta be set number two in the points. Andy Brass, excuse me, he's the leader in the points. Andy Brass is coming after him. These guys have got to stay focused. Now, let's get back to a horsepower story. Schaefer in the near lane, all kind of horsepower with this Dodge Hemi engine. The suspension's not working on the car. Meanwhile, they go back, you hear the name Alan Root again, making the Ford horsepower, so it's turned into a, a muscle game, if you will. No matter what happens, like rock and roll, on the other end of this track, you got a twist and shout. Who takes it, Gary? Well, the Ford takes it a close one, though, with the Dodge. We've seen the technology come a long way in suspensions. Now they want to hook up the horsepower. So now, as you indicated, you alluded to how they're trying to get more horsepower each passing season. So a quick one, a good one for Dan Runte in the Power Wheels Bigfoot. He turns in a 497. That's quicker than round one. That would make Fred Schaefer the fast loser. Let's go down trackside and talk with Dan Runte. Good number, 497. That's uh, that's that's just fast. He fell in the fours twice this time. The track's really looking good out there, Army. I don't know what else we can do to make it any faster. Meanwhile, I want to go back and show you this run of Fred Schaefer, who was taken out by Runte. Now watch, something happens, a rough landing over the second set of cars. The front end collapses right here. There is no recoil, and something breaks in the front end. So he's still in competition. This could be a major problem. Let's go trackside and check with Army. Gary, what we're looking at is a cross member in the very front of the barefoot Dodge. Now, Fred Schaefer is talking about landing so hard that this is the kind of impact. It's literally ripping this metal apart. That is some tough metal to be doing that to. One of the problems we have, it's not part of the chassis, so he can run the truck. We understand he's going back in the staging lanes with it like this. He just doesn't have time to weld it back up. We've got a welder on, on scene. It's just not going to work. He's got to get back in the lanes. you got to remember, he's going head hunting for these Fords tonight. Back to you, Gary. Yeah, right now, this season has been a big foot show. And there is Andy, the far lane, the Ford against the Dodge barefoot of Fred Schaefer. Fred playing catch up, as we said earlier. He's with leaning a broken on it. truck right now, but it's going to be Andy Brass. Whoa. Another hard landing. And there's Jim Kramer and the crew ecstatic for Andy Brass. As he said earlier, they're trying 
to improve this truck, to press the truck, and try to catch the teammate. Yeah, they're leaning on the equipment now. We're 13 races in the season. We're at 10. There's a couple of things that these trucks have in common. Uh, same size engine. Both of them had the just say no to drugs decal on the back, and I think both drivers believe in the no fear philosophy of life because you are going to see a double throwdown run here. No love lost. Andy Brass got the experience, trying to use his experience to make up a little horsepower. He says he's down on Runty. They've been able to shake him in the past. Is he going to cool down, keep a cool head, and go to the other end of the winter? We're going to find out. Remember, Runty, in the far lane, is your national points leader. Andy Brass has been there before. He knows what it's going to take to pull this kid in. Can he do it? Once again, Andy Brass second in the point standings to his teammate, Dan Runte, as they stage for the championship here in Canfield, Ohio. Runte has been in eight of the last ten finals. Good lead by both. Oh, it's all Dan Runte. Dan Runte by almost a truck length, which is still an impressive victory. There's a five-second run. He has been so consistent all leading. This will help to pad his points lead over Andy Brath. The top three are Fords, then it's a Dodge, and then a Chevrolet. You know, I have to wonder, does this represent a changing of the guard within the Bigfoot monster truck racing team? Well, Army Armstrong, who does have the biggest feet? Gary, an answer to your question is simple. Dan Runty has the biggest feet in Canfield. Through the qualifying session today, he had quick qualifying time. He's already taken two wins out of Canfield. So literally, everybody was kind of spooked by him. Well, that's not the case with the other Bigfoot truck, Andy Brass, who lost his national points lead to Runty here at Canfield. He and his crew have kind of regrouped, reset their train of thought, and come back and go quicker than the Bigfoot Power Wheels with their Bigfoot Cruiser in that first round of elimination. What I'm trying to tell you, I don't know which one of these trucks could hold on and win this thing today if it's at all possible. But right now, in this sport, both of these trucks are capable of kicking their competitors through the field goal finish line. Back to you, Gary. Here's a look now at the top five qualifiers today. Runte Quick in a 502, then his teammate Andy Brass a 511, then Patrick, Gary Porter, and Colt Cobra. Now, here is action from round one. In fact, Andy Brass turned in the quickest run of 496. That ties him with Dan Runny for the fastest time ever in this type of competition as he took out Fred Schaefer in round one. Now, also in round one, Paul Schaefer, near lane, respectable, 515 ET. Spent a ton of money to get that low. However, it still wasn't good enough for the Ford. The Ford takes him at a 505. Dan Runty continues on. Okay, Runty and these guys seem to be leapfrogging everybody. Uh, a 515 is an awesome run, but Runty and the Bigfoot boys, they win a tenth quicker. Everybody catches them, then they jump out. For an example, Mark Hall goes up against Colt Cobra. Hall and Chevrolet, Cobra and a Ford, same scenario. This guy goes a low five-second run, a 511 to be exact. Hall makes a good run, nothing to be ashamed of. But the Ford camp have found something that keeps them about a tenth in front of everybody else. Now watch what happened to Ray Porkowski in the near lane after he gets taken out by Dan Patrick. And he was very lucky right here to hang on. He puts the power back in and keeps it upright. Yeah, he was awfully close to high side. And Gary Porter comes out, the big hope for the Chevrolet camp out of uh, North Carolina. Lays down a good run, but the big question is, can he get into the next round and run in the low fives with the Ford? Gary, what we're looking at are the final set of cars in the left lane at Canfield, Ohio. Now, this weekend, there have been four races run chasing these Penda National Points Championship. In this lane, not one vehicle has touched the last car. Every race, over 100 of them, have literally flown past this spot. And this spot's the finish line. Back to you, Gary. Well, Dan Runty certainly has the package going his way. The package meaning horsepower, the suspension works. He's tough to beat. Oh, plus, he's got a cool driver's suit and a no-fear decal on his helmet. Well, uh, yeah, but he has to put the pedal down and have it all hooked up, though, when he goes racing. And so far, this has been his season. Yeah, still got a cool driver's suit. Hell, he does that. We're both kind of jealous of this driver. So Chevrolet versus Ford. Let's see what's going to happen. Schaefer near lane, Chevrolet, nothing to lose. He's experimenting, trying to get the horsepower to the ground. We know the Ford can do it. They leave together. Gary, you take the call. That's going to be Ford at the far side. Bigfoot power wheels of Dan Runte. So he will advance. Dan had a time of 5.04. There's a time for Runte in the power wheels Bigfoot. He will advance. And 
Maybe uh, pad his points cushion just a bit of 517. Respectable run for Paul Schaefer. There's your 10th I was talking about, the Ford's leapfrog. You catch them, they'll jump out of 10th on you. You catch them, they'll jump out again. Let's see what's going to happen. Run they at the finish line a little bit lollygaggle landing there, but it worked. Lollygagging, there's a word for your vocabulary. Let's go back trackside, Army. What's causing the truck to yaw like that on the other end? That last jump is throwing you completely sideways, it looks like to me. Army, it's pretty much the way we got the Trailmaster shocks valve. They're set, the truck's setting down in between the cars. That's what we're looking for. We're really not looking for the finish line. As long as the truck's landing and we can control it, that's after the fact. And that really doesn't make a big difference. Like I said, if, if the truck sits down in between the two sets of cars and hooks up the whole distance, that's what makes your times faster. The concerns that some of the other driver have are uh, the number of crew members that are coming out here now. Jim Steikotter, he's an old drag racer. He comes over with the Bob Tanner operation. is listed actually as a crew chief for that truck. But what he's serving really is a statistician for all the Bigfoot and Bob trucks here. He's the guy that dots eyes and cross T. But the other teams don't have the luxury of having a Jim Steikotter on their team. Or the perfectionism that he brings to the sport with him from the sport of drag racing that he's been involved in. Back to you, Gary. There's a look at Colt Cobra, and there's a look at Dan Ronte, a pair of Fords, the Power Wheels Bigfoot, and Snakebite. you got to remember, earlier in the year, Colt Cobra snookered Ronte. I don't think it'll happen again. When I say he snookered him, he psyched him out. Ronte, kind of a high-strung individual, a little bit nervous. Colt Cobra got the best of him once. Let's see if he can do it again. They are both staged. Watch the Christmas tree. There they go. Both leads good, no man's land, I think. Ronte, what do you oh, think? Oh, Ronte ever so close. It is a 5.25 for Colt. And for Dan Ronte, a 5.21. So they actually, they slow down just a bit. There's the time for Ronte. But Ronte takes the victory by inches. Well, they slow down in time, but that was a good side-by-side -side race. Check this out. A little bit of slip on the start line for Colt Colbert. That cost him. Ronte took advantage of it and immediately goes the other end. And for the ninth time this season, Ronte goes to the finals. He's with Army. Well, snake bite, you put him away. You know Andy Brass is coming after you like a fast-moving freight if he gets past his round. You know, what's going to happen at the end of the day here? Well, that's just it. If he does, it's two Fords in the final, and that's what we shoot for every time we come out to a race like this. Besides that, Army, I don't know. We'll have to see what he turns for a time. That last pass he made, we'll just have to see what comes out of it and what lane we get thrown in. Andy Brass, there's the Bigfoot Ford. That is the Bigfoot Cruiser. We understand Porter is building a new truck back in the... Carolinas. He's going to try to be back on the circuit with it in the future, but right now he's just trying to play hang on with old equipment, to be very honest with you. He's just finishing out the season this year. It's not really a new uh, next year. Chevy against Ford. Chevy the near lane. Ford the far lane for the right to go to the championship round here in Canfield, and it is Andy Brass. Ooh, close at the end. Andy Brass, though, nails it. Look at that. 494. He'll have lane choice. 494 for Andy Brass. Gary Porter turns in a 504. Any other race, an 04 is good enough to win. Gee whiz. Incredible as we take a look at the replay. See how close it is at the finish. Brass with the hole shot, but he just does hang on. And now we'll go trackside to Andy. Army? Andy, you make changes. You and the crew have been thrashing. You're talking about going 49. Son, you went the quickest in the sport, a 494 to go into the final. Yeah, we did. You know, it's been something that I've been looking for all year, you know. I wanted to be the first guy to turn the, into the four nines, but uh, Dan Patrick with the American Gladiator, he was the first one. And that kind of upset me a little bit, you know. So we knew we was going to have to do something else. We was either going to have to come back in and run a bunch of four nines consistent or turn in uh, either a 490 or maybe even a 480. And uh, that's what I've been shooting for now. It's just going to see what we can do. You know, we got to run fast to, to get the points back and to get into the finals, and that's what we're doing. Gary, you know, in, in forms of racing, like NASCAR racing and everything, the tires are so important. The announcers keep telling you how they're changing the stagger, they're changing the compound, or what have you. This Ford is no difference whatsoever. Andy Brass was trying to find the handle. I'm going to show you what the handle was. These tires are normally the rear tires on this truck. Okay, the rear tires back there now are normally the front tires. What he did was take those tires and reverse them because 
there is a weight difference. The tire that's on the front now is actually lighter and used to be on the back. Now that he's got more weight on the back, he seems to be pulling in the times. He doesn't seem to be pulling in the times. He's starting the fastest in the world. But looking for the handle, you hear that term all the time. In this case, he was just moving those tires back and forth and swapping them. Back to you, Gary. Well, it certainly made a difference if, in fact, that is the reason why all these runs in the four-second bracket this afternoon. Well, you know, attention to detail, you've got, and all young racers know this, you have to pay attention to detail. Somebody had to take away those tires to know that they were lighter. That's, That's attention That's why to you detail. have a crew chief. Yeah. Your team members, there's Andy Brass, the far lane. He has lane choice for this championship. His teammate, Dan Runte. Runte leads. Now, Andy Brass, really, with only two more events left in the Pendant Point Series, has to knock off Dan Runte. Well, Andy Brass is, is the old pro. He knows what he has to do. Uh, Runte has played his hand. Now it's up to Brass to sneak in the back door and whack him in the head, and that's exactly what's going to try to happen here. I'm using terminology to let you know that Andy Brass still believes he can win this world championship. It'll be the fourth world championship if he does win it. So you're saying it's his experience that will make the exactly. difference in the final three events of the year. I, I believe so. They're both good racers. They're both good, good run for both of them, but Andy Brass takes the victory. Oh, wait till you hear these times. The first four-second final. 4.99 for Dan Runte in a losing effort. And Andy Brass goes a 4.91. And there is his ET once again, the first time ever. Both the finalists run in the four-second bracket. In the interview earlier, Andy said he would he thought potentially he could go into the four eights. I thought that was a little bit of hoping, but I tell you, 4.91. He just a blink away from a 480 run, the quickest side-by-side -side ever. He did it. Let's go down to Andy. Gary, the license plate kind of tells the tale. 491, quickest ever. Got a ticket you to death. We understand that puts you back in the national points lead. Well, I'd have to look at the points. I don't know exactly where we're standing right now. I know we're going to be up there pretty close or right, right behind him if we aren't not or just right ahead of him. Uh, the pass, I'm pretty happy with the pass. You know, we've been having a lot of problems with the truck. It just, it's, it's been running, it's been running good, but it's just not been just peak, you know. I mean, I can tell when the truck's running and, and when it's not, and it's been dealing us a fit this weekend. But like I say, there at the end, we started changing just all kinds of stuff. I changed my driving style, and I kept with the style that I did change to, and it seemed that we just started getting down to nines, you know, 497, 496 and that, and then that's where we stayed. Whatever you did, you did right. Congratulations, Andy. Well, thank you, Arm. Andy Brass in Bigfoot has been a kingpin in monster truck competition for so many seasons. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power here on the National Network. You know, I have to apologize. I'm a bit embarrassed. It seems like every time we come to my hometown, it is cool and wet. Although it's partly cloudy right now, it's been raining all weekend with more rain in the forecast. And speaking of raining, the guy who has rained over this event for the past four years is Andy Brass. Now, it has to be a bittersweet weekend for Andy. This is his final weekend of monster truck competition. Yes, Andy is leaving the Bigfoot organization to pursue other motorsports interests. Now, it's also the final weekend of the Penda Point Series Championship. And Andy finds himself in a tight points battle with, of all people, his teammate, Dan Ronte. So here with more on the complexion of the championship is my colleague, Army Armstrong. Gary, there's all kinds of stories going down here at Indianapolis Jamboree. First of all, the big news is Runty's out, Brass is still in, so Brass can close it on this national championship. Now, if Andy Brass is going to step down as a national champion, I guarantee he's not going to retire easy. He's going to go through that door screaming and hollering. He's put the handwriting on the wall today. He's not going to roll over for anybody. Speaking of handwriting on the wall, the qualifying session was awesome. Trucks breaking, tearing all kinds of stuff up just to get into this truck field of 12 fastest monster trucks in the world because everybody wanted to be the last guy to get a shot at Andy Brass. Some of them get a chance to do it, but the big story, like I said, Runty's not going to be one of them. Gary, what does that do to the national points chase? Well, looking now at the standings, Army, after this round one, now Brass has picked up 30 points on Runte. If he continues to win, he could pick up 250 points and regain the points lead with a win in round two and start stockpiling the points because Runty's on the sideline after this run in round one against Pam Botters. Now Dan breaks something on the Power Wheels Bigfoot. And of course, the win goes to Botters at 617. Look at the water still standing in the shutdown area. There's a look at uh, the Power Wheels Bigfoot, something wrong with the transmission. Now also in round one, Fred Schaefer, far lane, the barefoot dodge against Andy Brass in the Bigfoot Cruiser. This run was 
pivotal because what it did, his main competitor, Runty, was out. The big Dodge had been fighting all year long. He's out now, so Andy Brass is definitely sitting on the high ground in this monster truck elimination. Like Army said, it was a war just trying to get into this event. A little welding job there on Gary Porter's chassis. He had some problems earlier in qualifying as we take a look at that qualifying run. One thing people have to remember, this is an open field. As long as the truck meets safety requirements, each week we run the quickest and fastest 12 monster trucks in the country. You've got to earn your way into it. Also from qualifying earlier today, Dan Patrick in the Chevrolet Samson truck. Patrick been around the sport a long time, knows what it's going to take to win. He's going to need a little bit more horsepower, but today it might be a finesse track, not a horsepower track, Gary. But Army, the toughest run in qualifying, was turned in by Magnum Force. That's a Chevy body with a Dodge Hemi power plant. Don Van Lue is the driver, and watch what happened in qualifying. Well, the Chevy body and the Dodge combination didn't have a thing to do with Spit that. Spin a wheel. Spindle breaking, yeah. So that put uh, Don Van Lu on the truck, and uh, earlier we went trackside, and Army had a chance to talk to Van Lu. Once again, we get back to how tough is the qualifying session. We got Donnie Van Lu with us right now at the Arizona Sports Shirt uh, Chevrolet. Donnie, what happened? It looks like something just co completely cleanly broke off the front left spindle. Yeah, the front knuckle come loose on it. I don't know why, but uh, I guess some things happen sometimes. Uh, at least the uh, truck's still in one piece. I'm not hurt, so everything's fine dandy. You know, we can always come back qualifying man that is getting to be a tough thing to do for these jamboree shows very very hard very hard thing to do i mean uh, everybody's getting their uh, act together and makes a heck of a difference thanks a lot we're glad you're okay right, thank you here's some action earlier today from round one dabbing the far lane with that new power plant Oh, he just did get him. He yeah. just did get him. Porter had him over the first jump. As a shutdown here is showing you just how treacherous it is. But another thing, just is showing us, horsepower is not the name of the game today. We go into the next round, we're going to see a lot of vehicles we haven't seen this deep into the field. Not taking anything away from these guys, but the big horsepower guys, there's a lot of them sitting on a trailer right now, Gary. But the Ford had some problems at the starting line. There's the monster patrol in the far lane. Well, he's got his hands full of another Ford right now. Dabney, knowing what it's going to take to get in this round. Dabney leaves on him real quick. Shaver's going to have to pull it on the other end. Not going to happen. Shaver had a mechanical problem right yeah. there, and Dabney takes it. But I tell you, this Kirk Dabney is a real comer. There's the 551. Slow racetrack today, so really, we don't anticipate seeing those four-second runs we've seen in previous weeks. No, but we're only half a second off of that pace on a very, very treacherous track. It's not just slippery. It's treacherous out there. Just what a day to be a monster truck driver. This this board is getting to be awesome. You guys are thumping out there. Well, you know, Army, we're really trying to race a lot of these corporate sponsored trucks. There's a lot of big names out here. Um, we've got a lot of knowledge on our team, and what we don't have in money, we're trying to make up with some thinking power here. I'll tell you what, you're in the next round chasing these pen to points. Good luck to you. We'll be after it. As we look at Andy Brass sitting on the line, Mr. Concentration. But you know, Pam Botters is a story all on her own. She and her husband run this vehicle called the Boogie Van. She's beating these guys. We haven't seen her on TV a lot this year because she's qualified and not gotten past the first round. Again, today we're seeing a lot of new faces. We want to make sure people know the name Pam Botters and Boogie Van. They'll be a player in the future. However, today, not, today not going to be the case. She has a mechanical problem right at the Christmas tree. And Andy Brass with the 537 ET victory moves back into the points lead. I know you folks the Ford got to be awfully proud of this guy and what he's doing for you. He keeps bumping over that winner's circle, Bill. He's an outstanding young man, does a great job for Ford and a great job for Buck Cut. We're real proud of him. Okay, well, that's coming from the top right there. How did it feel to you out there? You know, it's got to be emotional for you. Okay, I'm going to be lay all the cards on the table. And you know everybody's coming after you. I know you want to win this thing. Where's your heart in this thing? You know, my heart's in the truck right now and just to make a good pass, be consistent all day today, and we're looking for a winner, you know, go all the way to the winner's circle this afternoon with the truck. Like I say, we're just coming out here. I'm just keeping my head clear, just trying to watch the truck. The Ford's been doing me a good good job down through the track. As long as we can hold it straight and stay with it, you know, we're going to take her to the finals. Kirk Dabney in the overkill truck in a near lane goes up against the monster patrol of Paul Schaefer in the far lane. But Marty Garza's crew on the overkill truck, he's kind of one of these computer guys. Like I said, around and play with it. That's where the idea for the chassis came up on the overkill truck. You put the computer knowledge of Garza up with Dabney, you got a tough team. But you can't take anything away from Schaefer because that guy will rock and roll you in a heartbeat. Well, of course, Paul has been making small strides all season long. When you add all those little building blocks together, sure. a large structure. That's what's uh, happening to Paul. Didn't have a great run the last round. 
but he comes back though as a fast loser but it's going to be all overkill this time look at the air oh Kirk Ooh, Schaefer really might be in trouble player. oh he got her woe okay. Schaefer would have been in trouble had it not been for that quagmire down there he was able to slide and the truck didn't tip over Schaefer heads for the trailer and Kirk Dabney in the finals for the first time this season the next pair coming up Andy Brass will take on Dan Patrick Ford against Chevrolet let's go down and talk to Kirk Dabney Tell you what, Kirk, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Well, I'm really happy it's going our way today. We've worked really hard to get here, and we're glad to be here. The truck is really handling good. My thanks to my crew, Marty, Bobby, and Brian, and the guys that have put so many hours into this truck. Hey, I love it. Thank you, Army. You've got two very experienced drivers. Both of these drivers have won on this circuit this year. Patrick being the only Chevrolet to have won this year. Andy Brass has been there before. Let's see what's going to happen. Brass looks good off the start, Gary. Yeah, Brass has him all the way. Takes the victory. He'll go to the bottom. Hang on, Andy. He almost got that thing upside down. But a 551, that's not as fast as Dabney. Kirk will have lane choice. And there's Patrick, 682. But how about that? Kirk Dabney with lane choice, a quicker run than Andy Brass. Well, Andy Brass had him covered, but watch this rough landing. I mean, his season could have ended right there. He almost got in big trouble and almost got upside down, but he hangs on, pulls it out. Right now, he's down in the pit area with Army Armstrong. Andy, final time. You know Dabney's tough. You know he's going to come after you with everything he's got. Plus, I believe he's got lane choice. I know he's got lane choice. Where's he going to put you, and does that bother you? No, the lane choice doesn't bother me. Chances are he's going to throw us over in the right lane, you know, but the right lane's been running good. We've seen it run good in qualifying, you know. It just happened to be I stayed in the left lane today just trying to make uh, passes because I knew some of the guys had faster times and I was going to have to run the left lane. So running in the right lane's not going to bother me a bit, you know. The, the, we feel the right lane's a lot better between the cars. Now, whether the takeoff on the start is going to do any different, but, you know, the, the time is made between the cars, so if the track's better between the cars, we're hoping we can do it there. Well, talk about leaning on some equipment. Look at this. First appearance in the finals for Kirk Dabney in the overkill Ford. And he will pull alongside Bigfoot and Andy Brass. As we had guessed earlier, Kirk with lane choice took the lane nearest the camera. And there's Andy Brass. Andy now has the pen to point three trying to secure another championship before he leaves the sport. You alluded to something a moment ago that we need to bring out. A lot of the big guns from Ford Motor Company are here watching this event, hands-on. They're out here watching these trucks run. Dabney could really help his cause if he could put that big blue truck away because he also has a Ford. A little factory support next year? Hey, well, who knows? It certainly helps, doesn't it? They found out in NASCAR it sure helps. But look at that. The sky has started to clear. We certainly appreciate that. It's always cold and dreary here it's in your hometown. Uh, I feel your, bad about that. We don't have this problem. We come to your hometown and you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a race. Check this out. Check it, it out, Gary. Good one. Who's going to take it? Who's going to take it? I don't know. She seems to know, but I don't know. Whoa. Meanwhile, Dabney has definitely got his hands full. Overkill takes the victory, does he? 555 yes. overkill takes the victory over Andy Brass. So we have a brand new winner in victory lane, the first time this season for Kirk Dabney. Look at it again, ever so close. Boy, Dabney leads on. We've got a good race. Two guys getting down in the trenches. Pull the trigger on the finish line right there. Dabney literally skies past him. Oh, by inches he skies past him. And here's a happy Kirk Dabney. Guys, this is what it's all about. Marty, come here. You're part of this on, team, Marty. too. Congratulations. A great run, but uh, I, I got to be real honest. You guys have been playing hardball all year long. You, you could have just rolled over to be their time. Well, you know, something like this takes a while, and it's not going to happen immediately. And that's one of the things that makes a good winner is you stay after and you don't give up, and that's what we've done. Congratulations, fellas. Everybody was tickled. It's a good run. This is what the sport is all about. And I'm sure Andy will come over and congratulate you, too. Hey, well, I hope so. And my thanks goes to Marty and Bobby and Roger and all the guys that help us at home and to my wife, Kathy, and my little girl, Brian. Paige, who put up with all this. Brian. Yeah, Brian, too. <laughs> Let's get them all in there because this is, after all, a team sport. Congratulations all around. And Andy Brass is headed over to congratulate our winner. There's Andy. Now, the new point standings. Once again, Andy Brass on top the heap over Dan Runte, Colt Cobra, 
Fred Schaefer and Dan Patrick in the top five. 12 of 13 events. The second five, Schaefer, Dabney, Porter, Porkowski, and Pam Botters. Well, let's go back trackside and talk to Andy Brass. Let me ask you real quick, Andy. One more race, then you're no longer a professional monster truck driver, but one more race to give you your third world championship. Fourth. What's Fourth, okay, I stand corrected. What's going through your mind right now? Well, all I'm worried about right now, like it says, is keeping the truck in, in one piece and trying to make it to tomorrow's race. And just, like I say, just get in it, be consistent, and, and try to make it into the finals. You know, if we can make it into the semifinals or the finals tomorrow, then that's all we need to do. Andy Brass in the Bigfoot Cruiser and the Power Wheels Bigfoot with Dan Runte. It was only a few races back that Dan Runte took the lead from Brass. But in the 12th outing yesterday, transmission trouble put Runte on the sidelines after round one. So today, in what will be his final drive ever in the big blue Ford, Andy Brass holds a 450-point margin over Runte. Hey, anything could happen. And here with more in today's competition is Army Armstrong. Gary, you talk about the best-case scenario. The people that bought a ticket today, they don't need that whole seat. They just need the edge of the seat because the Bigfoot boys are putting on a show of shows. They both made it through the first round. That means they're going to go against each other in the second round. But you got to remember one thing. In this sport, the quick loser of this round comes back so they can race each other now and possibly race each other again. It's a good day to be at the monster truck races, Gary. Let's watch them go. Well, Andy Brass was the fast qualifier. Dan Runte fifth fast, so Andy picked up 40 points right there. Could well be on his way to his fourth title in monster truck competition. Earlier in round one, Ray Porkowski, the Dodge Express, the far lane against the Bigfoot Cruiser, and it was all Andy Brass. Now, you notice, Army, those qualifying times were really slow. They qualified earlier today at the sloppy race course here in the infield at the state fairgrounds, and I think the speeds will increase as the program continues. Also, earlier from round one, Kirk Dabney, the far lane, one of the last races at the fairgrounds, but he gets taken out by... Power Wheels Bigfoot, Dan Ruddy. There's your other half of the main story we're talking about. You're exactly right. The weather is going to be dry for the rest of the day. It'll only get quicker. Pam Vodders. Now, Pam upset Dan Runty in the last outing, but in round one, she was no match for Sampson and Dan Patrick. There's the 577 ET for the Sampson Chevrolet. Now, Magnum Force, the far lane with Don Van Loo, Gary Porter, the near lane, the Carolina Crusher. Once again, from round one, it was Gary Porter taking the victory. Porter looked like he was back in his own form of national championship a few years ago. The near lane takes the win, Gary. We've got a story developing here, and it's all coming out of the lane closest to you and I. Well, Fred Schaefer served notice he could be the spoiler today. Also from round one, he takes the margin of Mark Hall. Also out of the near lane. Let me tell you something, this qualifying, this previous quick round, quick time, is going to pay dividends. To I wouldn't want to get in the far lane now. They've got me scared of this. Well, the snake with the second quickest pass so far, round one, he takes on Paul Schaefer, and he takes out Paul Schaefer. What lane was he in, Gary? Well, let me guess. The near lane. <laughs> Bass has been so far. You folks following us at home now? There is Dan Runty. He is chasing Andy Brass in the point standings. In fact, Brass right now with 630 points to his advantage. So obviously, Runte has to knock him out here and hope the Brass doesn't come back as the fast loser. And Runte is in the bad lane. Andy Brass is in the good lane. If I was a betting man, we'd be going with the blue truck on We're that We're a shilling on the blue one right now, right? Well, you know, unless, uh, and that's not taking anything away from Runte. He knows what he's going to have to do, and he's got the means to do it. But Andy Brass is a tough old hombre right now, and you can see the world championship decided on this run, Gary. Virtually identical trucks, identical equipment, However, a big difference right now, two. Experience. Exactly. And the lane choice. Exactly. In both of them in the lane closest to you and I. And the big blue. The truck is going to the utter end. If Andy wins, he is the champion in his final season of monster truck competition, and he is the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, you just seen Andy Brass win his fourth world championship and the race is not over yet well he has been so dominant here at the indiana state fairgrounds over the years we talk about the weather and the rain and how he's been raining but he's been on top of the hill he's the king you want to knock off and so far today it hasn't happened well like any kind of racetrack you've got tracks you have good feel for i'm sure circle track guys feel the same way he just feels comfortable at the indiana fairgrounds we take a look again, evenly matched right here over the second jump, and he pulls away for the victory. He's with Army. 
Andy, I tell you what, we hate to bother you at a time like this. We know you're concentrating on the event. Does everything feel good to you out there today? Yeah, the truck's feeling real good for us, you know. The lanes, we've just been watching the lanes, like I say. I'm just sitting here trying to get my keep my concentration straight, you know. Gary's been doing me a real fine job to uh, tune my motor, you know. We found some glitches in it there earlier today. It looks like we got them worked out. So the truck's working good. The track's coming around there a little bit, and I'm turning in some fast time. So I'm just trying to keep to myself, keep my concentration up, and, and do a good job today. Of course, Andy not content with the championship. He wants to win here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. And the Gary he was talking about was Gary Sweeney, a guy that's done a tremendous job with his engine. Now, both of these guys have not had the greatest year. Patrick has put a win under his belt. Gary Porter, past national champion, has been so hard racing, he hasn't had a chance to upgrade his equipment. Both of them are looking forward to the winner. They're going to learn. They're going to put what they've learned to use, and we're looking forward to next year for them out this national championship has been settled. Look at the floorboard of the office space there in the Carolina Crusher. That's how the driver sees it. Actually, look through that floorboard. A lot of people wonder about it. You cannot see in front of a monster truck for about 37 feet. Well, I'd have my eyes closed anyway. It wouldn't matter. Exactly. Hey, check this out. Yeah, a bit of a surprise. They call him Elvis. They don't know why, but oh, Elvis put Samson on the trailer. Elvis has not left the building. Yeah. Jerry Porter is back, a 549. Not particularly fast, but again, it's a very slow racetrack here. Okay, what, what we're looking at here is the crews that are working, a nightmare crews over. Everybody's helping the boogeyman, helping Gary Porter. Now, underneath this driver, you really can't see it, is a brake caliper that pinches to stop the front wheels. Well, the brake pucks that are normally in that caliper fell out, so he didn't have any brakes out of the front, no way to stop the front end from going. In the monster trucks at 10,000 pounds on a slippery track today, you've got to have the front brakes. Now, Porter's worked so hard to get here, and all these guys know how hard he's worked. They're going to try to help him get into that next round, but right now, these guys weren't helping he'd be going home back to you gary well that's one bracket here's a historic bracket these two guys have battled all season long for the championship andy brass and bigfoot dan running in power wheels andy brass will retire after this race his heir apparent is runte well talk about two guys that know andy brass well dan patrick and dan runte we talked to them earlier about his final race well andy and i go back several years when i was his crew chief when i worked for bigfoot so uh you know we both learned a lot from each other he was he's an excellent fabricator uh probably one of my closest friends in the world so uh i hate seeing him go but you may see him uh, with another team in the near future uh, so uh andy's one hell of a guy it's going to be kind of rough without him he's moving on to nas truck i really think he'll do somebody a good job over there i've been around andy a lot he knows his sport he knows motorsports I just think he's an all-in-all -all good driver. And he has just a tremendous fan following. And, of course, despite locking up a title, obviously he wants to put his teammate away yeah. right here and go on and win this particular event. You're going to see what Andy Brass is like. I guarantee you, he's not going to roll over. He's going to go through the doors of life kicking and screaming. He wants to go out <laughs> a winner. And, and that's that's only natural. And Runty wants to beat him. You know, let me tell you, a lot of guys came to this race for one reason today. They knew it was going to be his last time in a truck, and everybody wanted to get the last piece of Andy Brass. You know, Nobody done it yet. Very few drivers, very few racers, can really say that they won their last event in whatever given series they were last in before they moved on. You're exactly right. You know, this, it's history. The national championship settled. Now it's for bragging rights, and it's going to be close. Andy Brass. Andy Brass, but it was close. Andy Brass slides to a stop. He knows he has the title in hand. And one more win here today, and he'll have this victory as well. The Bigfoot Cruiser takes the measure of Dan Runty in the Power Wheel Bigfoot. Runty at 543 is a good time. He ran him hard. You know, nobody rolled over. That was real race. Well, when you go to the Jamborees, you're going to see real racing all the time. No matter what the track conditions may dictate, you've got a good show right here. That's how close it was. Andy Brass takes the victory. There is the margin of victory right there as Gary Porter. Snake Bike's been in three finals this season. Can he make it four? But remember, Gary Porter has had some chassis problems this weekend. Had to have the services of Welder. He's had some brake problems. Not a real great weekend mechanically for the Carolina Crusher. So the winner here goes against Andy Brass. And Andy is being congratulated there by his teammate Dan Runte as we take a look at the staging now with the Carolina Crusher Gary Porter and Snake Bites. You were talking about this race Gary there's another important factor you can't overlook and that's lane choice and this left lane is just paying dividends and the right lane has been robbing these guys blind. Porter's in the right lane I'm not saying advantage or disadvantage but man if I was racing I'd sure want to get on the left side of this track. Porter's running good right though. There, but it is 
snake bite. So a pair of Fords in the finals. Snake bite and Bigfoot. There's a 539 ET for Colt Cobra. The last guy that could beat Andy Brass is Colt Cobra. There's a look at Gary Porter's number of 574. So the snake bite truck in the fourth final. Back to the starting line, the final pass for Andy Brass. And just a bit earlier, Army spoke with our new champion. Andy, I tell you what, it, it is for me. I know it's got to be for you. It's got to be an emotional time. This is your last ride in a monster truck. Your career is going to end in a few seconds. Are you, you're going to be the national champion. So how hard are you going to run this thing? Well, we're going to run this one just like we did all day. You know, we just we come out here, run a consistent, consistent race. You know, we've been setting some fast times. You know, our time's been getting faster all day. So we're just going to come out here and try to beat a little faster than what we was last round, pull away from the stake, and and nothing better would would suit me that uh, win my last race of the year. Well, that's the best way for a driver to go out. The final race, Andy Brass takes on his old nemesis, Snake Bite. And by no surprise, he puts Snake Bite over there in that right lane. And Snake Bite's not afraid of the right lane. He says he's got a handle on it. Of course, if you're a snake, I don't guess I'm mud would bother you. We've already talked about that. Both drivers work in the starting line back and forth. It's almost like neither one wants to go to the line first for the last run for Andy. You notice how they're going back and forth and what they're doing really right now. It doesn't serve any purpose. They're just trying to get their rhythm going. Okay, I think Andy's going to go on stage first. There he is. I think the, maybe his stomach right now is uh, up in his throat. I don't know. I'll tell you mine is because this guy has been a class individual. We're paying in his crew. They've worked so hard to get him here. Look at that. You think the intensity's not here? Man, you are wrong. Even the uh, snake bite crew goes over to stand with them because they know this is going to be a double throwdown final race for Andy and the man Brass. There it is. The final pass for Andy Brass, the great champion after nine seasons takes the win he goes out in style a big round of applause congratulations all around in the pit area andy brass the bigfoot cruiser laying down a good one in this mud a 522 to the 551 of colt cobra so andy brass not only wins the championship for the fourth time but once again he goes out in style by winning his final monster truck event as coach b would say don't quit don't ever quit you'll be a champion Andy Brass is. Coming at you from the end zone. The wind goes to the big blue Ford on that right side of the camera. Here he comes down to the shutdown area for the last time. So Bob Chandler, Bigfoot, the organization takes the national title. Brass is your winner, and he is climbing out. Well, Andy, to all our friends on the National Network, I want to introduce you to Andy Brass, four-time world champion. Way to go, Andy. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Army. I appreciate it. You know, it was like I say, it was a tough series this year, the Penda Series. Everybody running. They was running hard, you know. Uh, everybody coming up so so much this year. You know, like I say, everybody's suspension got dialed in a lot more. Their motors, a lot of guys going with Linkos and clutches. And, and uh, to come in here with a two-year-old truck, was really something for me to, to take the championship with it. You know, that was the only thing I had coming into the season because we had the truck pretty well dialed in from last year. But to do it two years in a row with the same truck, I'm, I'm just tickled pink. Congratulations. Four times a world champion. We're awfully proud of you. Well, thank you, Arm. Well, once again, let's take a look now at the final Penda Points Championship. The congratulations all around for Andy Brass as Andy takes his fourth title in nine seasons. Dan Runty, his teammate in the Ford to Bigfoot camp, goes second. A Ford with Colt Cobra third, then it's Fred Schaefer in a Dodge and Dan Patrick in the Chevrolet, then it's Paul Schaefer, Kirk Dabney, Gary Porter, Ray Porkowski, and Pam Botters rounding out the top ten. Well, I'm not sure that's the way I'd want to celebrate in Victory Lane. That may become a new tradition in monster truck racing. Our congratulations to Andy Brass for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power.